Hello! Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Nico Colaleo. Um, hey, you know, my favorite TV show ever is David Lynch and Mark Frost's Twin Peaks. And I thought it'd be fun to make a Twin Peaks video ranking here of 151 characters. Uh, first off, a major warning and heads up. Uh, pretty much this whole video will be spoilers. So if you have any intention of watching Twin Peaks, specifically season one, season two, the film Fire Walk With Me, and then season three, The Return, all in that order, um, you uh, you probably want to save this video for uh, once you've done all that. Um, so please proceed with caution. Uh, this list was created on Tier Maker, as you can see here. Um, I'll also provide a link in the video description if you'd like to do your own ranking of this. Um, the tier list was made by Kerbalru. Actually, however, their original list um, didn't have all these characters. They had uh, it had 129 or maybe 130 characters, and there was like 22 characters that were missing that I have added to this uh, for my version here. That's a new total of 151 characters. So um, as I go, I'll try to mention which characters I added uh, that were missing uh, from the original list uh, as I get to them uh, here during the ranking. Before we dive in, I'll uh, explain the tiers really quick. Uh, at the top, we got S tier. We got Hello, which is the best of the best of the best of Twin Peaks characters. Characters that if uh, they weren't there, there would be no Twin Peaks. So my very top favorites. Um, under that, we've got A tier, damn fine characters. Uh, these are fantastic, uh, damn fine characters that I love to bits. Um, you know, almost the best of the best. Um, we've got tier B, both wonderful and strange characters, both wonderful and strange. This is kind of the middle tier where I really, uh, I really like these characters. They're good, they're nice. They're not spectacular, but I quite like them. Tier C under that, the coffee is getting stale. Uh, this is very middle of the road. Uh, characters that uh, are nothing special. Not bad. I don't exactly dislike them. They're okay, but, you know, I could take them or leave them. Tier D is the name that's in the original tier list that I didn't rename. I, I just really liked it. The name was already there, which is Chowder-Headed Yokel. And uh, these are characters that I find just kind of a waste, either boring or they just don't have a lot going on. Um, you could get rid of them completely and the show wouldn't be any different. Characters with barely any presence, very blah, so they would go here. And finally, we have tier F, Darkness Within. And this is a special tier that's really not going to be, uh, honestly, not going to be seeing many characters. Um, like I mentioned, Twin Peaks is my favorite show ever, so I don't think there are many if if any characters that i straight up hate in this show um even the worst characters have at least like a little something to like about them like a certain moment or like a funny line or something but uh, there are a few characters that are so unpleasant and so unenjoyable that they might go here um if any it might be just a couple or maybe a few even characters that end up on the very lowest of this ranking, I don't think I hate. They're just characters I like the least. I love practically every character in this show, uh, save for a few stinkers. So <laughs> they'll go here and F tier if they're uh, characters that I just really can't stand. Uh, and lastly, before we get into it, I just want to say um, this is all just my opinion. Don't get too bent out of shape if I rank a character you love too low or if I rank a character you hate too high. Um, if it bugs you that much, visit the link uh, in the description and make your own uh, ranking list. Oh, and, you know, finally, for the rankings themselves, amongst the fan base they are or whatever, they're just ranked simply based on entertainment value for myself and how much I personally like, you know, seeing them in the show. Uh, I think that's enough intro and disclaimers. Let's do this. Let's rock. These are all in alphabetical order. So our first character uh, here is Albert, Albert Rosenfield, forensic specialist, Cooper's uh, assistant in the murder of Laura Palmer. Um, Albert's awesome. I, I, I really love him. And I love how he really takes center stage in, in The Return by season three. But even though he's kind of a curmudgeon and... Um, 
you know, is really sassy and everything. He definitely has a charm about him. For now, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna rank all these for now and then just go through at the very end and just make sure that everyone is kind of where they need to be. Just make extra sure. But for now, I'm I'm gonna do Albert and damn fine. Um, he's great. <laughs> uh, let's see here, Andrew Packard, Catherine's brother, uh, Josie's husband. Nothing against the guy. Um, I don't remember him too much. He's kind of a lot in season two where once the killer is revealed in the middle of season two, the second half of that season, as we all know, is kind of rough. And Andrew Packard is in that section. I think that's where he shows up the most. So I tend to skip a lot of those episodes or at least big chunks of them. Um, so mm, he's not like terrible, but I think for now, coffee is getting stale. I think I'll put him there. Uh, Andy Brennan is next. Who doesn't love Andy? Seriously. The good cop, he's unheard of at the time on television, was, you know, a cop crying at the scene of the crime for Laura's death. And I really love how he uh, takes control and gets a lot stronger in the return. So I'm going to say damn fine. We got Annie Blackburn. Um, Heather Graham, right? Not a bad character at all, but she does take mainly place in that uh, second half of season two where things get pretty rough. Um, but, you know, she's a nice character. Kind of a bummer how, like, she kind of becomes Cooper's new romantic interest over the ship that's supposed to be there is Audrey and Cooper. But um, by this point in the show, Audrey is with uh, Billy Zane, and that's kind of weird and out of nowhere. Um, you know, hey, the writers did their best considering David Lynch was completely checked out and gone at this point of the show. Um, again, Annie Blackburn's not a bad character, just kind of in a weird spot in the show. I think I'll put her in both Wonderful and Strange. Yeah, okay. Um, our first season three, uh, the return character, we got Tony Sinclair, uh, AKA Dougie's shifty coworker. Um, he's really, uh, I, I like him. He, he's funny. I, I love how he just like completely melts down so easily when uh, things aren't going his way. And uh, Cooper as Dougie is like just getting everything, you know, handed to him. And even though like all these all these people are out to kill him and everything, everything just ends up going completely Dougie's way. And just I love seeing Tony just like you just can't believe it. And everything kind of falls on him. And then and then he's really quick to change after that. He wants to make things right. I really like him. Um, I don't know if I like him enough to be damn fine, but uh, I think B tier will be Tony. Hey, we got Audrey Horn. Um, one of my favorites, uh, definitely one of my favorites, uh, maybe Maybe my favorite female character in the show. Uh, yeah, who doesn't love Audrey? Um, it's it's kind of a bummer that uh, season two, after David Lynch left, they didn't really know what to do with her. Suddenly she's completely forgetting about Coop and in love with Billy Zane, uh, which just kind of comes out of nowhere. End of season two, she gets blown the hell up <laughs> and then season three you know she doesn't even show up until two-thirds the way into the show um so uh she got it kind of the bad end of the stick in the uh second half of the uh, series but the classic stuff the whole first season she's great she's center stage a great character um i think i think for now she might be our first hello i'm audrey horn and i get what i want okay Becky Burnett, um, or Becky Briggs, uh, Shelly and Bobby's daughter in, in The Return. She's kind of a bad egg, <laughs> not in terms of like character, but just her, you know, her character. She's, uh, you know, she makes mistakes. She's always asking Shelly for money, makes even worse decisions in guys than Shelly did when Shelly was Becky's age. Um, I don't know, her, her, her scenes are kind of like a bit stressful because she's always... She always seems to be in trouble. I don't know. I think I might bump her up to B, but for now, she might be a C tier, kind of just middle of the road. Not maybe maybe the text here, coffee is getting stale, is too harsh, but we'll keep it for now. I think I think that that's a good spot for her. Um, Benjamin Horn. Uh, I love Ben. 
for a long time in the original show, he seems to be maybe possibly the killer, but uh, I just love his personality, you know, kind of a bad guy in the first two seasons, but then by the end of season two, he really turns a leaf and uh, becomes a good guy pretty much. And then um, in the season three, the return, he's uh, even 25 years later, he's still a good guy. So I, I love uh, kind of both aspects of him. Um, he might go in hello, the top here, but uh, there is a major part in season two where after David left, Ben has all these scenes where he thinks it's the Civil War and it's like, it's pretty bad. It's like they had no idea what to do with this character. And, you know, if it was maybe for one episode of just him going nuts and thinking it was the Civil War, fine. But it goes on for like, for like seven or eight or ten episodes, something like crazy long like that. And like, it gets to the point where you're like, oh my God, this is still going on. And just honestly, like along with uh, James and all of his scenes, after the killer's reveal, I just, I completely just fast forward through any Ben scene. It's just a waste. It's a total waste of time. So that might be keeping him from being S tier. Um, I think I'll, he's definitely A tier for me. Yeah, I think. Um, let's see here. Betty Briggs, Bobby's mom, Major Briggs's wife. Um, you know, she didn't, not too big of a character in the original series, but I do like when she shows up in The Return. That might be her most um, important and substantial role in The Return is just going to help the police force uncover those hidden um, papers that uh, Major Briggs left behind in the in the chair, in the rocking chair in the living room. Um, beyond that, not a huge character. I think um, mm, I would feel pretty bad putting her in D, but I think C is, is, is good. Oh, and also, here we go. Oop. There we go for now. And I like Tony better than uh, Annie. And let's see up here. I think... Um, I think that's good right there. There we go. I'll rank everybody also as we, uh, you know, put every, everyone in order here too. Um, yeah, okay, great. We got Beverly, Ben's assistant, uh, a season three character, The Return. Um, I like this character, um, Ashley Judd. She's gorgeous, she's great. Um, she's there mainly to listen to this to the sounds, the balance sounds, the two different notes that are playing in the hotel, along with Ben, and pretty much a character for Ben to converse with and talk to since Jerry is uh, having his bad drug trip <laughs> most of the season, all of the season pretty much. Um, yeah, she doesn't do too much else than that. She is married to, um, I forget his name, but the, the guy dying from cancer and whose whole character there is just to make her feel like shitty and really bad that he has cancer. So those scenes are kind of, you know, and they don't really go anywhere and they just kind of there to make you feel bad. So, um, yeah, I think Beverly, um, mm, I feel like C is still too, maybe too harsh, but, um, that might just be the title of the C tier. I, but I think she'll go here. I'm going to put her, I'm going to put her right there. There we go. Uh, we've got the, uh, oh, I, I think this might be the first character that I added that isn't part of the original uh, tier list here, but this is uh, Jimmy Scott is the Black Lodge singer. He sings in the uh, season finale of uh, season two, uh, the Sycamore Tree song, and uh, that's all he does, but it's really great. Um, you know, just something perfect uh, that uh, would go into a David Lynch directed episode. <laughs> um, I think um, I think I'm gonna. He's both wonderful and strange. I think he's he's gonna go good there, and um, I might like him more than Annie. We'll do that for now. Yeah. Um, okay, we got Blackie. Blackie, the um, I could be wrong. The owner or the owner or maybe like the head honcho of a uh, One Eyed Jacks. I, I'm pretty sure that's what that was her role. I think she's mainly in season one, right? Is, is she? She dies, I think, by season two, or maybe uh, right into season two. So, um, Belch. excuse me. Yeah, I think Blackie, uh, both both wonderful and strange, I think. Um, I'll put her there for now. Yeah, I think that's good. I've never done, uh, if you haven't noticed, I've never done a video like this, a tier list, where I'm like talking out loud and figuring out things as I talk. 
So I hope this is entertaining <laughs> for for everyone listening. If not, you know, hey, go watch some All In Scoops episodes or something. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm having fun with this. I like this. Uh, again, this is my favorite show. So, you know, the people who do like Twin Peaks, I think will really appreciate this, hopefully. Um, we got Bobby Briggs. Uh, yeah, the bad boy. Laura's original boyfriend. Um, our first suspect in the show. I love, I love how a, as a youth, Bobby is a bad boy, but then by the return, he is a good, he's a cop and he t really turned his life around and did something I think his dad would be really proud of. Um, I love uh, just how three dimensional his character is. I'm wondering if he's S tier. He might be damn fine because I do like Albert and Ben more than him and possibly Andy. I think he'll go here. Yeah. We got Bob. Oh my God. We got Bob here. And that's uh, <laughs> um, one time a friend of mine, a producer at Titmouse, she's actually the person who, who got me hired uh, in my first job in the animation industry, Jackie Buscarino. But she once told me she couldn't watch Twin Peaks because Bob was the scariest TV character she's ever seen. And I totally, I, 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 I know what she means. Just incredibly spooky. Definitely like m might be the, the creepiest TV character uh, of all time to me anyway. Um, gosh, I love him though. Whew, hang on here. Do I like him better than Albert? Um, for now, I think he might go in hello. <laughs> uh, Bradley Mitchum. Uh, I love the Mitchum brothers. They're kind of the new, the original show. Seasons one and two had the, the Horn brothers. Season three, the Mitchum brothers kind of take that place. But this is, uh, you know, Sir James Belushi. Let's see here. He's going to go in A. And I think, I don't know if I like him better than any of these characters in here so far. So I think he'll go right here for now. Um, okay, uh, I had to look this person's name up, um, Burns, uh, and I guess he's one of the Silver Mustang Casino managers. The Mitchum brothers are his bosses, but uh, he is um, Brett Gelman, that's it, right? Yeah, a great comedian, I really like this guy. And um, his character isn't too big of a character, but I do, I like Brett, and I like how he plays him, and I love when he's talking to Dougie Jones and Mr. Jones, you know, like, I just love that delivery. Um, and I feel actually feel bad for him when he gets the shit beat out of him and dragged out later <laughs> by the Mitchum brothers. But uh, for now, I think, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think he's both wonderful and strange. I think right in the middle there. Yeah. One of my favorite new characters in the return in season three, Bushnell Mullins, Bushnell, Bushnell, um, Dougie Jones's boss at the, uh, what is the Lucky Seven Insurance Company? Um, I love this guy. He's such a nice boss. And, you know, David Lynch has this great way about him where he really picks these, like, much, much older, you know, senior characters that are kind of, kind of fuddy duddies, kind of like nice, like, grandpa kind of like funny grandpa kind of characters that are really kind of cozy and nice to, to, to watch. Um, yeah, that's what Bushnell is to me. Uh, and he really helps out, you know, Dougie once, once Cooper wakes up and, uh, he's, he seems to be a guy that's like always there, you know, fighting the good fight literally. Cause he was a boxer when he was younger. Um, let's see. Um, I think he's better. He might be at the top of the B tier. I don't, I think A might be uh, a little too, too good, but I think for, I might, I might redo this, but I think um, Bradley might be top of the beat here right now too. Candy! Candy, uh, the Candy Girls, but the lead girl, Candy, um, she is uh, great. She is really funny. She's, uh, you know, a source of love, uh, you know, when you need her and when, good things are happening. She's happy to distribute gifts, give, uh, you know, keys to the new car, finger sandwiches, drinks, always there uh, when you need her for that kind of stuff. And when it's when evil things are happening, like before the Mitchum brothers turn good, um, she's uh, 
comes off as kind of airheaded or spacey, but not a dummy, um, just uh, hard to grab her attention. But when, you know, love or good things are happening, uh, it, it's it's not hard to get her attention at all. And she snaps right to it. Let's see, I, I'm probably B tier. Um, I think maybe right there. Right after Bradley, right before Bushnell. There we go. Okay. Um, hey, Carl Rod, Harry Dean Stanton. Um, he is hilarious. And uh, he first shows up in the movie, but he's just like this, you know, super stressed out landlord. It just means I'm more shit I gotta do now. Just he's so stressed all the time. And by the time he's in the return, he's much older and he's really mellowed out. So I love those two sides of him. Um, he's much funnier in the movie, but he's very sweet in the return. Um, let's see here. Let me see here. He might be in damn, I think he might be in damn fine, but we'll do the lowest ranking of damn fine so far. I'm, I'm I, the reason I took down Bradley and possibly even Candy from A and Bushnell is that I just don't want to, I kind of need to be a little ruthless here. I don't want to end up with too many in the A tier, you know, like too soon. Um, even though all these characters are just so lovable and great, I want to kind of try to be, you know, conservative here. We'll see towards the end if there, are, if if the A tier isn't overflowing by the end, I'll put some of these B tiers up there too. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, Carrie Page. Um, well, it's not Laura Palmer, but it's uh, Cheryl Lee, Laura Palmer's actress. Um, I guess it's Laura Palmer in the real world, Carrie Page. Um, she's from Texas, has a thick Southern accent. She's only in the last episode of season three. There's not much to her uh, besides just, she kind of just, uh, she seems to be on the lam. She goes with Cooper, no questions asked, barely, and seems to be associated, uh, possibly a murder or at least an accessory to a murder with the dead guy in her in her house. Her scream and terror uh, is the last thing we hear in the entire show uh, in the last those last couple of seconds. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, you know, Cheryl Lee is a great screamer, uh, all, uh, you know, as also she is she's with Laura Palmer. So um, you can already hear my voice getting raspy. I need to drink more water uh, to get through all these characters. I'm definitely going to have to take some breaks, but, you know, I'll edit those out. <sighs> You don't know how quick your voice gets raspy once you're actually performing and talking so much. But Carrie Page, um, let's see. I think I'll put her in both Wonderful and Strange right behind the Black Lodge singer. I think that's a good spot. Catherine Martell. Yeah, Catherine has a lot of secrets. She's very dubious, has a lot going on behind the scenes, um, always kind of looking out for herself, plays like acts friendly, but, you know, as soon as it's in her favor, she'll turn against you on a dime. Um, I don't, I'm not like in love with her, but she's a good character. Um, I think she's going to go under B, but I, and I like her better than, I think we're going to go right around Carrie Page, actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. You know what? We'll do, there we go. Great. Okay. Uh, oh, Chad, Chad, the stinker. Um, I, he's an awful guy, but you kind of love to hate him, but you know, he is so mean to Andy and to Lucy. I don't like hate him. I wouldn't say F, but he is like, he does trigger me when I watch him. And uh, like I said, he, he I, I, I love to hate him <laughs> and, um, but I hate to love him. Um, I think he might be, you know, mm, I, he might be a chowder headed yokel because he does trigger me when his scenes come up. And I just like, I want everybody to like get him and just like, fuck you, Chad. Come on, Chad. You know, like, shut up. Go away. Yeah, I don't I don't hate him, though. I just like, again, you love to hate him. I think he'll be first character in the D tier. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Chantal Hutchins. She and Hutch are Mr. C's uh, henchmen, hench people that live the longest. Um, they still meet a pretty gruesome demise, but uh, um, and they love their snacks. They love their fast food. They love Cheetos and Doritos and 
chips and uh, burgers, and they're always just <laughs> almost all of their scenes. They're um, while they're killing people, they're eating junk food, um, which is pretty funny. Um, let's see. I think um, whoever Hutch is, I'll I'll place him right along with Chantal here. Maybe B, but like like the low low B. Both wonderful and strange. Maybe better than Blackie, actually. You know what? Let's do let's do that. I should write ahead of Annie. Cool. And then Hutch will probably go up here too. Where is he anyway? Um here we go. There we go. Okay. Charlie. Now, hey, a lot of people don't like this character. Um because yes. His scenes in The Return with Audrey are very frustrating, but that's the point. They're supposed to be, I think, because Audrey is, you know, completely lost in The Return, and she doesn't know if she wants to join up with the new show or stick around and be a part of the old show. Um, past or future, she's, she's having a really tough time deciding, and Charlie here is basically who she bounces her thoughts off of and she is really quite insulting to him um, because he is frustrating he's just like he just represents time that has passed and you can't you can't reason with time it just it's gonna do its own thing and it's gonna be there and there's nothing you can do about it um, but I really like how stern he is I love his facial expressions are actually really really funny and he's kind of a perfect David Lynch character because he's um you know not a handsome leading man. He's kind of a weird looking guy. And you know, that that's what makes, I think the world go round is, you know, interesting looking people, um, weird, you know, I wouldn't say ugly, but you know, just really interesting looking people that aren't, you know, your, uh, <laughs> super handsome Hollywood stars, you know, not everybody needs to look like George Clooney. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think Charlie, um, again, even though he's uh, not very well liked as I see it in the fan base and uh, is kind of frustrating, I really like him. Um, I, I just find him funny. Um, I think he's going to, I think A might be a little too high for him. I think he might go top of the B tier list. Yeah, I think that works. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. We got Special Agent Chet Desmond, um, who I also really like. From what I know, um, when the movie came out, audiences really wanted to see Cooper, you know, our main character. And when we didn't get Cooper for the first half hour, and so we got Chet Desmond, I think he got kind of a kind of an unfair shake. <laughs> for what it's worth, he's a really cool character. He's just, you know, another Cooper-like character. He knows what he's doing. He's a good FBI agent. He's good at what he does. You know, he's got his own... Modus operandi. Got his own MO. And then, of course, he disappears very mysteriously um, about a quarter of the way through the movie, and then we never see him again. So, I don't know. I think the character got kind of a, an unfair turnout for what he is. Um, I also like how stern he is with all the Deer Meadow cops and uh, how they're all assholes. Uh, especially Sheriff Cable, and there's a great deleted scene where they actually fight, and Chet beats the crap out of them. <laughs> um, I see why it was cut, but it's a really fun, entertaining cutscene. So yeah, I like Chet. Um, let's see, where would I place him though? Um, not an S or A. I think B, but like maybe like middle, like right, right in the middle, maybe. I think that's I think that's a good spot for him. Okay, next we have Judge Clinton Sternwood. Um, you know, I think the real scene I remember is when he comes up with that drink when they're at the when they're at the bar. He he doesn't have a giant role. Um, I remember he stopped by just to well be a judge <laughs> so um and i remember like he he ordered uh three drinks for for him and the others and it was like a really tall skinny blue drink i think um that's what i remember him from other than that not too much um yeah so he didn't uh make a huge impression on me uh not a bad character but just not you know a huge impression um i think uh 
Yeah, he might go like last on the seat here. Here. Yeah, okay. Uh, Doctor Constance. Oh boy, Doctor Constance Talbot or Talbo, um, the coroner in the Return of season three. I like. Uh, I love actually how she and Albert kind of hook up. That's really cute. <laughs> like all this time, Albert's been such like a hard ass, and then then he actually meets someone who you know connects with him and it, and they, they both connect together with their sarcasm and their jokes and their sarcasm and they connect and they, they finally find each other um that's really sweet uh and then mostly she's uh handling major briggs's headless body but that albert scene with her is really great too um let's see i want to put her um uh, i mean this might be too harsh but i don't think she's prominent enough to be in B but I don't want to make it sound like she's making the coffee stale <laughs> but well you know she's at the top of C for now she's like mid middle of the road again there's not not really any of these characters that like I flat out hate okay Lieutenant Cynthia Knox um, also in the return um, has some good scenes uh, also with the corner she's more in the in the first few episodes and then kind of disappears um, not too much to her but um, you know not a bad character I think I might put her around C again um, but maybe on the maybe like around here I think that works yeah I feel like the C tier I feel like the title here is a little too negative but I'll, I'll keep it just because <laughs> um, ooh Mr. C Oh, well, it's Coop's evil doppelganger, and, um, man, you know, he's evil, but he sure is entertaining, um, and he's a total badass, and it's great, um, he is one evil motherfucker, uh, yeah, I don't know, I feel like, like, th this character and our next character here, I feel like, you know, what else is there to say about them that everyone else has already said and praised and everything, um, yeah, Mr. C's a bad guy but he's he's fun to watch being bad um i think for now it might be s tier if it if it's a tier it's going to be top of the a tier but i think s tier for now i mean he's just so chilling and like my favorite scene with him is when the f when gordon and albert and tammy find him and he's um in prison and he's all locked up and you know the his voice is all deep and creepy sounding and he's putting on the fake thumbs up trying to act like cooper and and fool them um i just love that so yeah i think i think he's gonna stay put in s um and hey look we got our man the main character the heart and love of the show the face of the show twin peaks special agent dale cooper kyle mclaughlin brilliant probably i mean I've heard a lot of people say this and I agree, probably my favorite TV character of all time, like in any TV show, I think this is my favorite TV character. Um, Dale Cooper is just fantastic. <laughs> he is damn fine. <laughs> this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. From how well he does his job to how you know on top of it he is, how smart he is, he's funny. You know, all of his methods, Tibetan methods, all of his unorthodox ways of like solving, you know, murders and crimes and and doing things and all just the tiny little things that he he loves. You know, he loves so many little all the little things like trees or what kind of trees are these or just or coffee or donuts, pie. And then like his advice of give yourself a present every day, once a day, give yourself a present. Don't plan it, don't wait for it, just let it happen. It could be a new shirt at the men's store, a cat nap in your office chair, or two cups of good, hot, black coffee. And I just love that about his character. He's just like, he's such a good guy and so entertaining and, you know, makes you think and makes you laugh. And even if when things are out of his control, he always manages to save the day in the end. The real heart of the show was Coop and Harry S. Truman's, you know, friendship, loyalty, and support for one another. That was the, the love of the show. All right. 
So surprise, surprise, but Coop uh, can't go anywhere except top S tier, the top of the top, the best character on television for me. Um, how's that for enough praise? <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's great. <laughs> um, okay, uh, we got Daria, Daria Monroe, um, one of the earlier hench people for Mr. C in The Return. She gets pretty brutally killed by Mr. C in, I want to say, the second or third episode. Uh, she doesn't get as much screen time as a lot of the other people associated with Mr. C, which is too bad. But um, not a bad character by any means. Um, I want to say, let's see here. I feel like I praised her and now I'm dumping her in C, but I think I just don't like her any better than these characters up here. So, um, yeah, I think she's going to go like middle of the C tier. I'll get over it, and sorry if I'm mentioning it too much, but I feel like the C tier might seem too negative by the way it's titled, but I'll have to just let it go and live with it. Um, I still like these characters. I mean, I still like Chad to a degree, <laughs> even though he's in D tier, you know? There are very few, well, I'm gonna, I've, I'm really anxious to see who ends up in the F tier. I know there's at least two or three characters that like, I just not even, the show can save it, but, you know, I just can't, they're just bad characters. I just can't stand them, but yeah, we'll see. Um, okay, uh, oh, Colonel Davis. This is Ernie Hudson uh, from Ghostbusters, but I think he has like two scenes and he never leaves the desk he's at. Um, this was definitely a character that was not in this original tier and I added them uh, just cause I remembered them. Let me see if I, I don't think I, oh, you know what? And Burns up here, uh, Brett Gelman, um, I also added him. Uh, he wasn't on the original list either. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's see. Colonel Davis, not much to him. Not a bad character, but um, mm, I kind of don't feel anything for him. Uh, let's put him Let's put him near the end here of, of C. Um, okay, I could not find this guy's name. Um, Double R Diner Customer. That's all I know this guy as. I don't even remember him having a line. I think he has one scene, and I think people might think that he's the food critic, if I recall, and then he doesn't turn out to be. And I don't even remember a single thing he says. So actually, like, it's it's as if, like, if he just wasn't, I feel bad saying this for the actor, but if he wasn't there, there would be no, like, it wouldn't affect Twin Peaks in Iota. So you know what? I think Darkness Within. I just don't, I don't know who he is. I don't, and I don't even care. <laughs> I tried looking it up and I couldn't even find his, a name. So yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay, um, Detective Dave Maclay. Um, I like this guy. Uh, yeah, you know, a detective who's along for the ride with uh, Gordon and Albert and Tammy once the FBI show up. Nothing too much to his character. I love his reaction when uh, Bill Hastings' head explodes. <laughs> he just goes, Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> Pretty funny. He's dead. But uh, other than that, you know, just kind of middle of the road character. Not bad. Um, let's see. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot of Bs and a lot of Cs uh, tiers, but um, I think he's gonna go top of C tier. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, I added this guy. He wasn't there. Del Nibbler. Oh, Del Mibbler, um, the old banker from the last episode of season two. Um, another great old man, David Lynch kind of character. Um, but I love him, especially for a deleted scene from the movie where he's screaming about a two by four to uh, Pete and Josie, but just going, I wanted a two by four. I want a two by four. That scene is so fantastic and possibly one of the funniest scenes in the entire series, but it's it's a deleted scene from the movie. It's not even in there. So, um, <laughs> but I don't know, this guy, this guy rules. And I love how in season two, I love how sl slow he's going back and forth. And you're, you're so anxious to see Coop in the white and black lodges. And then we just keep going to this guy, just like, who the hell is this old banker? Why are we spending so much time with him? Um, I just think that's hilarious. So, um, gosh, I mean, like, I think it's kind of ridiculous to put him too high up there, but uh, 
I really quite like him. Um, I think he's either going to go top of B tier or, oh my God, he might go A tier. I can't justify putting him higher than like Bobby or Andy, but I think, I think that's where he's going to go. That's pretty funny. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, good old Denise Bryson. David Duchovny playing Denise. I think a really strong and positive transgender character, especially for, you know, 1991. That was unheard of on TV to have a positive trans character. So great on David Lynch. And and then, you know, she comes back in season three and, um, you know, her, her position in the ranks of the FBI has uh, gotten a lot higher and doing great for herself. It's too bad we didn't get more of her in the return, but, um, you know, great character. And uh, let's see, let's see. I think definitely A tier, but let's see where. I think maybe end of A tier. I think that works. Yeah, I think that, that feels that feels good. Okay, we got a trio here, the Detectives Fusco. They're kind of goofballs. Um, they don't take their police work as seriously as they should. And the tall middle guy who reminds me of uh, Big Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. He's the Big Ed of this trio. All he does is just like laugh really inappropriately at <laughs> every joke that the other two make. Um, and it's just like this really bizarre <laughs> high-pitched laugh. Um, and it's funny. They're, they'll go in the C tier. Um, there's really not a lot to them besides just like cracking inappropriate jokes and laughing at their own jokes. But uh, um, yeah, I think um, I think they'll go right with the uh, other detective here. I think that's a good spot. Okay, we got Diane, Diane Evans. Now, we never saw Diane in the first two seasons in the movie. We could only imagine who she was, who to, uh, Cooper was talking to. But now we see her in season three and not only see her, but we see her an evil Topo version of her also. So there's there's kind of two Dianes. There's like there's like a you know, the real Diane and then like an evil on and off evil Topo version of her. So uh, I'm trying to consider both of those the same character, even though they act kind of differently. The real Diane is much sweeter and uh, kind of less bitchy, but she's a great character either way. And, you know, Laura Dern is fantastic. I think she'll go in A tier, but where? I think I, I think around Denise, probably. Maybe, maybe right before Denise. I think that'd be a good spot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Donna, Donna Hayward. Um, in the first two seasons, and then she split, and another actress played her in the movie, and she doesn't show up in season three at all. So kind of sad that her character doesn't really progress past uh, the season two finale. But uh, when she is there, she's great. You know, she's Laura's Palmer's best friend. Um, and then she ends up dating James. Through her and James, there's a lot of amateur investigation where they kind of take Laura's mystery into their own hands. And at the same time as Coop and the rest of the FBI uncovering the mystery, uh, Donna and James also take it upon themselves to do the same. Um, yeah, I like Donna a lot. Um, let's see. Not one of my favorites, but I definitely like her. I think, um, but I, th I think, I think like right in the middle here or near the top of B, I think is a good spot for her. Cool. Um, okay. Um, oh, Doris Truman, uh, Sheriff Frank Truman's really, really uptight, nagging wife. Um, I gotta be completely honest. I don't understand the point of this character. I can't tell if it was for comedy or if to add a little extra drama to Frank's life or what, but all she does is yell at the poor guy and complain and nag. And we never really have a scene where she's like apologizes or is like treats Frank better, like later on. It's kind of a lot of setup and no real payoff to this character. Um, and again, I, I'm not sure if her nagging and bitching is supposed to be funny, but it's kind of more irritating than funny. Um, maybe a little funny, but um, yeah, I don't really, I don't know if I like this character. Um, is she as bad as the F tier though? We'll see. For now, I'm gonna put her as almost dead last. Chowder-headed yokel. 
but depending on how many more D's and F's I get, she might end up in F tier, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, we got the drunk. I just put drunk jailbird, but this guy is literally that. He's uh, always in the jail. He's only in the return season three, and he's, um, I don't even know if he's drunk because when we see him, it's over multiple days. So you think he would sober up after a while, but he doesn't, he never sobers up. He's always acting like this, like a drunk asshole. And he just, um, you know, repeats everything that everyone else is saying. He's like a parrot. I understand also that a lot of people were also irritated and frustrated with this character. I, I like him. I think he's funny. Um, I, I, I like that he repeats everything everyone says, and he just doesn't make any sense. He ends up just not equaling to anything, really. But I kind of like that. Um, I think it's funny. I, I, I would feel like like I'm not taking this seriously if I put him like in A tier. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Uh, I think he might be going in B tier, which is a surprise. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. But I think he might. I don't know. He just makes me laugh. I think I might put him right after, right after Chet. I feel like I'm just fucking around if I put a character like this higher. <laughs> um, I think I'll leave it, uh, give me a sec here. Okay, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm actually putting him pretty high up on B. I think, I think that's where I'm placing him, right behind Donna. <laughs> Go figure. Okay, we got, Two Dougie Joneses. Uh, oh, by the way, I added, I think I added the drunk jailbird on my own. He is not in the original tier list. Same thing with the real Dougie Jones. Um, Cooper as Dougie Jones is is there in the original tier list, but um, the real Dougie Jones isn't. So I, I said, hey, you know, he should be in there too. We briefly, we only see him for maybe a couple minutes total, but um, you know, the, yeah, the real Dougie Jones, um, He's not a very good guy. He's cheating on his family with Jade. And, um, you know, when he's in the red room, uh, he says what any one of us would say, what's going on, or that's weird, or this is weird, or I, I feel funny. I just like how blunt he is. Um, but he's not a very good guy, so I can't really put him like super high up. But um, I think he might go under the B tier. Let's see. I might put him right where I was putting the drunk jailbird. I think right after the Black Lodge singer, and but before Chet Desmond, maybe let's let's do that. I think that's a good spot for Dougie Jones, the real Dougie Jones. And then we've got Cooper as Dougie Jones, which is again like the drunk jailbird. Uh, he just kind of mimics everyone and just parrots the last thing that uh, they said. Um, and you know, Cooper's like is is stuck in this identity prison as Dougie Jones for like what 13 episodes <laughs> 12 episodes most of the return um but he's hilarious and uh i know as a whole we're all not supposed to like these dougie scenes um not hate them but you know we're supposed to uh not be as invested in them as say mr c's scenes but uh, hey, you know what? I like I, I I understand how it can be really frustrating for some, but I'm with David Lynch here. I really enjoy Cooper's Dougie Jones scenes. Dougie Jones. Yeah, they get a little long, um, a little frustrating, but that's the point of them. Um, so if you can get past that, I think Cooper as Dougie Jones is a character that is pretty enjoyable. Um, let's see. I'm gonna place him. He's definitely better than the real Dougie Jones. Um, he might go under damn fine, actually, because, I mean, he is really funny. And it's Coop, after all. It's just Cooper, you know, kind of stuck in this limbo. It's just a, kind of a soulless Cooper. But it's still an enjoyable character. So um, I feel kind of bad if I put, like, this soulless guy ahead of, you know, these really strong characters. So I think he might, I think he might go here for now. I think that feels all right. <laughs> I wonder if any of these are really hot takes so far. Um, and then we've got another Dougie. We've got Dougie Milford, who is uh, the mayor's brother. And I barely remember this character. So 
I can't even think of anything to say about him. I I have here in my notes that he's Major Briggs's mentor and he's the mayor's brother. Um, but I personally can't remember a single line of his. So, yeah, I think he's going to be chowder-headed yokel. But he doesn't annoy me as much as these car these two do. So I think he's going to go there. <laughs> um, Dr. Jacoby, Laura Palmer's therapist. Dr. Jacoby's uh, a fun character. Always wearing the 3D glasses. He sees all these TV characters in three dimensions. Uh, sees them with more dimension than the average uh, TV character. Um, and then in season three, he's a uh, Dr. Amp. <laughs> kind of a conspiracy theorist uh, podcaster. Um, so let's see, um, Dr. Jacoby, I would say maybe around Donna. I think, uh, <laughs> I hate to say I like the drunk jailbird more, but he's just, he makes me laugh more than Dr. Jacoby, I guess. So <laughs> that's, that's where Dr. Jacoby will go. I think that's, that's good. Uh, Duncan Todd, a, uh, season three only character. Um, you know, what's funny is, um, I just got done rewatching the whole series, um, over the last couple months and uh duncan todd i like him but he does not move i don't think he moves from his desk the entire series he's always sitting at his desk and uh you know he, i guess he works for mr c and then he ends up getting killed by, by uh chantal so um doesn't get to do as much i think as his uh he doesn't have as much potential i think as his character could have had so um i don't know i don't want to say chowder headed yokel but I think he's definitely no higher than a C tier. Let's see where though. Um, I think, I think maybe around here. Let's do this. Let's do that. I think that feels all right. Um, okay. And then we got uh, the mayor of Twin Peaks, Dwayne Milford. Um, this guy reminds me of Mr. Magoo. He always does that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that kind of laugh that Mr. Magoo does. He is a judge of the Twin Peaks beauty pageant. And then he be, he's a sore loser when Annie wins and the, uh, what's her name? Uh, the girl he was rooting for doesn't win. He's kind of a sore loser there, but you know, I don't know. He's kind of Mr. Magoo, like kind of funny. Um, not a great character, but not bad either. Uh, I'd say um, he's got more personality than these characters. So I might put him like right where Duncan Todd is. He's got just a, a hair more personality than than these characters and, and below. So I think that's a good spot for him. Uh, Warden Murphy. I feel bad for this guy because Mr. C kills his dog, <laughs> shows him his dog leg, Mr. Strawberry, and then he hacks the whole prison and scares the crap out of him and then he thinks he gets away okay without any harm but then he ends up just getting shot in the head by uh Chantal and Hutch so poor guy I feel bad for him but uh he's a he's a cool character he's all right I think I'm gonna put him right here right by the other detectives of the return maybe he's not as funny as the uh these three detectives so I'll put him right there Okay, we're entering the E's, the letter E's, and uh, I can't believe, I think I've been doing this for about an hour now, we're only at the E's, so <laughs> this might end up being a pretty long video. Um, okay, we got Big Ed, Big Ed Hurley. Uh, Ed's great, he's stuck with negative Nadine with the eye patch, but he wishes he could be with Miss Twin Peaks, Norma Jennings, and that's a, a character desire that lasts as long as the show does. We're always hoping that he escapes Nadine and ends up with Norma. He's kind of a big lug, big teddy bear kind of a guy. It's funny when Nadine thinks she's a teenager throughout season two, um, Big Ed's like reactions and his facial expressions of reacting to what Nadine is doing is always really funny. And I just love how, I love what a stand up guy he is. And he's always there to help part of the Bookhouse Boys helps Cooper when they um, go to One-Eyed Jacks to rescue Audrey undercover. Great guy all around. Definitely going in damn fine, but I'm not sure where. Let's see. I think I like him better than Bobby, but not as much as Andy. I think that's a good spot for Big Ed. Cool. 
we've got Donna's mom, Eileen Hayward. Not too much going on with her. She's nice. She's kind of just, she's sort of just like, well, she's Donna's mom. She's there. Doesn't uh, do too much, though. Hmm. I don't want to be mean, but gosh. All these C tier characters I like more than her, so <laughs> I feel <laughs> she might be a chowder headed yokel. <laughs> um, that seems kind of mean, but hey, I like these characters more than her, so what are you going to do? Again, I still like these characters, even if they're in the D tier, you know, there's something about, there, there's some things to like, so nobody I really hate so far. But that could change, we'll see. Um, okay, we got. Emery Battis, uh, he's the manager at the Horns department store. And uh, when Audrey works there and then when Laura Palmer worked there, uh, he's like the boss and he's like a really, really like weaselly kind of a pushover and a coward. Cause like when at the um, One-Eyed Jacks, when like, you know, shit starts going down, he's just like immediately, you know, cowers or like tries to hide or, you know, doesn't want anything to, you know, he's not sticking his neck out for anybody, that's for sure. But he's not even going to, you know, stand up for himself. He's just going to let people walk all over him. I, I, I don't dislike him, but um, let's see, he might not be going much higher than a D tier. I wonder, I wonder, let's see. I think for now, let's put him at the end of the C tier. Okay. Um, Ernie Niles. I don't remember this character. Okay, I had to pause for a second and look and Google and refresh myself on this character. Okay, Ernie Niles is uh, was an accomplice, uh, Hank Jennings, and is the stepfather of Norma. Okay, now I remember. Sorry about that. Um, but still, uh, really doesn't do much for me. I think he's primarily in the second half of season two, which is the only real chunk of Twin Peaks that I kind of skip around and I really don't watch any scenes unless it's uh, a Cooper's scene or with the FBI. So Ernie, um, I'm sorry, buddy, but you're just kind of a, you don't have a huge presence in the show. I think chowder headed yokel. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to move Chad up because I while he's a pain in the ass, <laughs> I do find him more entertaining than these other characters here below him now. So, okay. Um, and speaking of bad characters, <laughs> we've got my next F tier. This is Evelyn Marsh. Um, she and then this other guy, what's his name? Uh, hang on a sec. Malcolm Sloan, this guy right here. These two... These two characters are in the um, James scenes that everybody skips in season two. As soon as James leaves Twin Peaks, like midway through season two or so, they had no idea what to do with him. And so we keep cutting back to him throughout the rest of the season where he's involved in some kind of weird I don't even remember because I, I just skipped them because they're pointless. They have nothing to do with the show and they're just there just to give James something to do. So it's kind of infamous that at the you know second half of season two, just skip any scene with James. And it's these two characters that are with James in those scenes. So they're just absolutely pointless. They are useless. Um, Evelyn Marsh and... <laughs> See, I forgot his name already. Malcolm Sloan. Um, by far, they are F, F tiers. They have, like, they don't even belong in this show. I'm sorry to those actors, but your scenes are the scenes that everybody skips <laughs> when they rewatch Twin Peaks season two. So there you go. Um, okay. <laughs> um, all right. The experiment. We're in the E's here. The experiment. Um, this is the uh, creepy figure that shows up in the glass box that uh, Sam and Tracy are watching in uh, The Return. And uh, when Sam and Tracy start to get, um, are about to have sex, I guess, or they start to anyway, 
this uh, the experiment shows up in in the glass box and uh, tears them to shreds pretty much. Um, so pretty creepy. Um, some good old David Lynch extra creepy scariness. Pretty cool. So you know it doesn't have any dialogue or anything, but uh, a neat good old fashioned scary David Lynch character creature. <laughs> um, let's see. Where am I going to put the experiment? Um, I'm going to put the experiment in B. Right, right around here, I think. It feels kind of weird putting a creature with no dialogue that's super creepy and on screen for like 10 seconds max ahead of like Heather Graham, you know, her character who's like, like a major part of the last few episodes of season two and has tons of scenes and dialogue. But, you know, hey, that's how I feel about this some of these characters, I guess. Um, that's okay. All right. We have the fireman, also known as the giant. Um, love this guy. You know, uh, in a lot of ways, he is also kind of the face of Twin Peaks. He's primarily known as the giant in uh, the original series. And he also takes the form of the, um, down here, the funny little man, <laughs> funny little old man from the Great Northern. Um, turns out to be the giant in disguise. And then in season three, we find out that he's actually called the fireman, a great uh, David Lynch kind of character where, you know, not a normal looking guy, really tall, uh, very distinguished, interesting looking person. And, uh, and this actor, he played Lurch in the Adams Family uh, 90s movies. Um, he's in all kinds of stuff. He shows up, you know, in all kinds of, uh, you know, thrillers and horrors and, like weird comedies and stuff. <laughs> so let's see, the fireman, where would the fireman go? I think he might go at the bottom of A tier. Cool. The things I tell you will not be wrong. Super, super minuscule character here, Frank. <laughs> One of Dougie Jones's uh, coworkers at the insurance company. He, not much to this guy. He's upset that Dougie Jones stole his coffee but then he gets a green tea latte that he prefers and he likes better. So that's really nice for him. <laughs> not um, huge impact on the show. So but there's nothing wrong with him. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see who I, how many characters I like better than him. Definitely these characters. He might be going right in front of Colonel Davis. It's like, I like Frank. And then once we get to Colonel Davis and below, these are characters that I don't necessarily like or enjoy, but I don't dislike them. Um, I think Frank is kind of the cutoff of like characters that I actually kind of, you know, give a shit about. <laughs> Let's see who else joins them here. Um, okay, replacing Harry S. Truman from the original series is his brother, Frank Truman, Sheriff Frank Truman. And uh, this is Robert Forrester, uh, great, a great role, a great acting. Um, uh, it's sad that, you know, he had to replace Harry. He's not, uh, you know, here's Harry actually. Um, and uh, he's not as good of a character as Harry, but he's there and he's, it's kind of big, big, uh, you know, shoes to fill, um, sort of a big role to fill, so. Um, and I know that he was David Lynch's original choice to play Harry um, in the original series. I think he's going to go in B tier. Okay, cool. All right. Newcomer to season three, we got Freddie Sykes. I think he said he was from London. He's the kid wearing the green rubber glove uh, that has infused with his arm <laughs> and become a uh, part of his body. Because if he tries to take the the glove off, it just rips his skin and he starts bleeding. So that glove is there to stay. And he, uh, it's his destiny, as he says, but he is instructed by the firemen to go to Twin Peaks and one day he will be needed. And that day comes at the end of season three and he helps not destroy Bob, I guess temporarily destroy Bob because you can't really destroy Bob. You can only, you know, beat darkness with light. So... He made it so at least Bob was taken care of for a good while. Yeah, I like this character. I like him. 
Um, I like how helpful he is and how brave. He just steps right up and is ready to show down with Bob without anyone even having to ask him. So, you know, that's that's real bravery and a good character. So I think I think he should go. Let's see. I like Freddy Sykes a little bit more than just middle of the middle. So I'll put him just a little bit higher. I think around here, around like Dougie Jones and uh, Catherine. I think that's a good spot for Freddy. Okay, Major Garland Briggs, Bobby's dad, turns out to uh, really um, be there helping Cooper out in the original season, uh, series. Sadly, the actor passed away before the return, so he only appears in still form as just a floating head. But cool character. I love his voice, and I just love what a good guy he is and how much he loves Bobby. There's that famous scene where he's talking to Bobby about a dream he had about Bobby and like becoming like a great man, and uh, and which he does because Bobby becomes a cop, a good cop. So it's like Major Briggs's uh, dream came true, and uh, a really sweet, a really great character. I think. Um, one of the best. I think Major Briggs is going definitely an A tier. I want to put him higher, like top of A tier, but I think I think I just like Albert and Ben and Andy a little bit more. But still, I love this guy. Tremendous feeling of optimism and confidence. You and your future. Gersten Hayward, one of Donna's two little sisters, in the original series, she she seemed to be like a child prodigy, like really smart, high IQ, and was the piano player, while um, Harriet Hayward recited a poem about Laura Palmer. I guess both of these characters are kind of, we can kind of lump them together, and they really don't do much beyond the, the poem and the piano playing scene. What's sad is that Gersten does appear in the return she had so much potential and was a great student super smart kid and then turns out when she's an adult she just ends up cheating sleeping around doing drugs being a terrible terrible person and all that potential just thrown away which is sad and it makes me definitely enjoy the character less we might be uh i feel bad putting two little girls in a D tier, but I think they might be chowder-headed yokels. I think so. I think I like Chad a little better because at least he has some funny moments. Um, yeah, I think we're going to do this for uh, Gersten and uh, Harriet. Um, I like... There we go. I think, I think that's going to work out. Okay. Hey, FBI Deputy Director Gordon Cole, David Lynch himself. Um, and I'm not just saying this because it's David Lynch, but he really is one of my favorite characters in the show. He's just like such a good guy and just hilarious with being hard of hearing and, and just all the hijinks that surround him with his hearing aids and everything. And just the way he acts, you know, his vocabulary, his phrasing, the, give me the glad hand. What's the good word? And then, of course, his scenes with Shelly and where he can hear her perfectly because he needs hearing aid assistance to hear all the evil that he uh, investigates through all the cases and mysteries he deals with. But Shelly at the Double R Diner, he can hear the love no problem with no difficulty at all. So yeah, he's definitely in hello S tier. But, but how much do I, I think he might be, I think he might be second place right now, right behind Coop. A glass of water, sweetheart, my socks are on fire. This character, I don't believe, has a name. Uh, I just have her as Gordon's French date. Her whole scene in The Return is just to kind of... I think it's intentionally frustrating that Albert is with us having to just stand there just waiting for Gordon and his date to just get on with it. Come on, like, let's move it. You know, nothing's happening here. Um, and just, you know, she, she's, she's meant to just... <laughs> just kind of drag the scene on um she's gorgeous and beautiful and i love when they uh when she and gordon both bond over the wine that they're drinking um but uh yeah you know it, it's a frustrating scene but i also appreciate 
that. I, I, I kind of appreciate that David Lynch has the, you know, the nuts to <laughs> put a scene like that in the show where he knows we're all wanting stuff to happen and kind of purposely puts in a scene where not much at all is happening. So it's very, it's kind of 50, 50 with me with this character. Um, where would I place her? I think she might go last for the B tier, both wonderful and strange. I think that sounds good. It's a good one. We got Hank Jennings, uh, Norma's husband, jailbird, not such a good guy, very shifty. He's always seems to have, you know, a scheme or something going on behind the scenes and uh, always seems to be trying to get away with something. He's not a very appealing bad guy, though. I don't dislike him, but um, there's definitely better antagonists in the show. Uh, so he might be the top of C. There we go. I think that works. Hi, Boogie Boy. That's my kitty. Okay. We got Harold Smith. Sadly, hangs himself in season two after Donna steals uh, Laura's, or attempts to steal Laura's diary from him. What is it? Agoraphobic? Or, you know, he's afraid of going outside and he stays inside. He, he, he kind of has a sad existence where he has to stay indoors all the time. I like him. I think he's like, a perfect middle of the road kind of guy, kind of character. Under B, but kind of on the lower side. I think I like him better than Annie. Um, I think that's a good spot for Harold Smith. Yeah. Sheriff Harry S. Truman, pretty much the second main character, right behind Coop uh, in the original series. And a huge bummer that he is not in the return. But, um,. I guess, you know, the actor was has just since retired, and I guess he's just enjoying retirement too much to come back and, and, and be in the show in the in the season three. But, um, you know, hey, he was in the original series, and I think a, a big part of the heart of the show is Coop's and Harry's friendship. The two of them are such a huge, huge part of the show. So he's, of course, uh, going to go under... Hello, and S tier, but let's see where. Right in between Audrey and Bob for me. Um, that seems like a good spot. Hey, who doesn't love Harry S. Truman? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, another major character at the uh, Twin Peaks Sheriff's Station, Deputy Hawk. Hawk was, you know, around in the original series, but uh, he really takes kind of center stage in the return uh, as far as the police team go. He's kind of running the show along with Frank Truman, but I'd say maybe even more so. Um, and I love uh, the end of season two when Cooper, he might be saying goodbye or, or something to each and every member of the sheriff's station. But when he gets to Hawk, he goes, uh, Hawk, if I ever disappear or, or something ever happens to me someday, I hope they send you to find me. And uh, that's what exactly what ends up happening in season three. Hawk is the one who kind of initiates looking for Coop and, and setting everything right that's been hanging since the end of season two. So um, Hawk is great. I think he's going in the A tier. Um, and I think, let's see, I think Hawk might go at the end of A tier. I'm looking at those with a pair of fresh eyes. I think I like, I think I want to move the fireman up a couple characters too. And... I think that I think we're gonna little rearranging here, no problem. Okay. Um, Heidi, one of the waitresses at the Double R Diner, um, <laughs> really not much to her, but what she does is funny and enjoyable. She kind of just giggles a lot, even at stuff that's not funny. She just constantly is giggling, <laughs> and uh, hey, it's infectious. <laughs> it, it is. It is uh, fun, I, uh, but not much to her beyond that. So um, I think uh, she might go, let's see. I think right this moment, she might go at the end of the B tier. But let me look through these characters really quick and see if I like her better than anyone else. I think Blackie is going to go at the end here. I think that's good for now. Yeah. Okay, cool. When I get to the end here, I think I'm going to go through and let 
you all know the 22 characters that I added that are not in the original tier, but this lady in the car, definitely a character that I added. I just have her listed as hysterical woman. <laughs> her scene is really bizarre. It's pretty scary, actually, because of the creepy, sick kid that's kind of hiding in the shadows in the passenger seat of her car, and then just like looms and appears out of the shadows out of nowhere, and it's really creepy. And this woman is just going hysterical. We have to get home! She's sick! Yelling, we have to get home, but you know, you can't go home again uh, at this point in the series because of what a rotten place that Twin Peaks has turned out to be. And just, you know, how just like the evilness has just engulfed this town. Her whole scene is just her screaming at the top of her lungs. So um, not the, the greatest scene to uh, be able to enjoy because uh, of her shrill <laughs> screaming. Um, but I don't dislike her. Um, and, and it is really funny when the sick kid pops up and she's and this a woman starts just going, ah, 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 and like just like the way that she's like freaking out is pretty funny too. Um, <clears throat> I think she's going to go, let's see, give me a sec here. I'm going to, this is higher than I thought I would place her, but she might go at the end of the B tier. Yeah, everyone I add to the B tier, I keep moving Blackie at the very end, but that's that's just how I feel. Um, okay, Ike the Spike. <laughs> this uh, little hitman tasked to kill Dougie Jones. Uh, one of many, many, many people trying to kill Dougie Jones in Season 3. Um, he's cool. He's a cool antagonist. I like his little theme music, I believe composed by David Lynch, probably Angelo. Lamenti, but um, like hard, like kind of rap beat <laughs> music that plays with Ike. Ike the Spike is gonna go. Um, hey, lots of B tiers, but I think I think he's a B, both wonderful and strange B tier character. I think I like him better than Harold Smith. I think he's gonna go there. Ike the Spike. We got Jacques Renault. Uh, I really like another great antagonist. I really like this guy. He's a, he's a slime ball. <laughs> he's a really sleazy guy. Uh, he's mostly, what, season one? Um, I don't think he lives to season two. And then he has a big part in the movie because uh, the movie is a prequel for Laura Palmer's Last Week of Life, and w which he played a big part in. So um, uh, he's in that great scene at the bar with Laura and Donna where the music is just called The Pink Room. But that song is just, like, fantastic. Uh one of the best pieces of music that David Lynch and Angelo Badalamenti uh, ever did. But yeah, Jacques is a, I think he's a cool, pretty cool villain. I think he might go into B tier. Let's see, let's put him right here for a second while I rank him uh, in these B tier characters here. I think Jacques is gonna go right there in between Freddy and Catherine. That feels good. Okay, Jade. Jade give two rides and she certainly did. Jade is a cool character. Not not in she's in only in season three. I think she's only in one episode, or maybe she shows up in two episodes. But um, it feels like right as we're getting to know her, her character is done in the show. But um, she's a woman that Dougie Jones is cheating on his family with, um, so she's not you know an angel or anything. But thanks to her, Cooper's hotel room key gets sent back to the Great Northern, and that helps uh, jumpstart reopening the case of where Coop has been and where he, where is he, he's been missing for 25 years. <clears throat> so kind of an important character here. Um, I love how frustrated she gets with Cooper as Dougie Jones, just being, you know, completely soulless and empty. <laughs> Definitely uh, kind of uh, on behalf of the audience, uh, feeling that <laughs> kind of frustration and uh, <laughs> what's the matter with you? Like snap out of it. Get your shoes. <laughs> Don't you know how to sit in a car? You know, so yeah, let's see. Jade, Jade, Jade. I think another B tier. Let's put her here and let's see how. Let's see who I like her better than. Um, let's see. I think I like her a little bit better than um, Hutch and Chantel. So Jade's going to go there. Okay. Oh, James Hurley. I feel kind of bad for James because he's sort of like 
a joke <laughs> in terms of the the show's fan base like everybody you know james is is cool he's always been cool james is still cool he's always been cool but <laughs> everyone kind of also makes fun of him i love this iconic picture of him we're just <laughs> this guy, his forehead's just a little too big to where it's it's just funny. Um, and then, of course, James's, you know, just you and I song is kind of a joke. It, 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 it you know, it doesn't even sound like him singing it. Uh, it's so repetitive. Um, I think, you know, that's supposed to be the point. But um, and then James just kind of, you know, falls in love with like every girl that gives him five seconds of attention. You know, I would put James, uh, there's a major reason why I'm not putting him up like, like higher up here. He's probably going to go in the B tier. Um, and that reason is in season two, after the killer's revealed, um, James leaves Twin Peaks and he just goes off doing whatever with these two characters down here in the F tier and it amounts to nothing. It's completely pointless. It's completely useless. And every time I rewatch the entire show, basically as soon as James leaves Twin Peaks, just skip every scene with him, skip every James scene because it's pointless and it amounts to nothing. And then even the writing crew of season two with David Lynch not there because he left the show, uh, even even after so many scenes that just go on and on and on with these two characters down here, uh, they just ran out of stuff for, they were already reaching for giving James something to do. And it just got gets to the point where I think we hear from, the last time we hear from James in the original series is like, he calls Donnie is just like, I'm in California now. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing out here, but uh, you know, Maybe I'll see you again. And then he just never shows up. And then we don't see him until season three. So uh, I'm glad that he has much more to do in season three. Being there with Freddie Sykes. Uh, what was he, a security guard at the Great Northern Hotel? Um, there's a nice scene of James discovering the uh, mysterious two-tone sound in the basement. And then he and Freddie are making sure that Nido is okay. Um, where's Nido here? That Nido's taken care of right here. So, um, you know, at least he has something to do in season three. Um, so let's see, um, James is definitely going in uh, B tier and let's see where, let's see where I should place him here. I think, um, I guess he'll be maybe near, right near Donna cause there's, they're kind of a, you know, two peas in a pod. Let me see here just for a sec. I think I'm gonna put him a little bit lower, maybe right by Freddy. I think that's a good spot for James. Okay, we got Janie E, Janie E. Jones, Dougie Jones's wife. Um, she has to deal with a lot of crap, <laughs> thanks to Dougie and um, his, uh, <laughs> just the way that Dougie is. Uh, he's gotten in a lot of trouble and Janie E is sort of, has to be there to clean up his mess. But then when Cooper fills in the role of Dougie Jones, and Cooper's obviously a much better a person, a much better man, um, you know, uh, in terms of personality and wits and character and even physically in better shape uh, all around as a person. Janie E kind of re-falls in love with Dougie Jones, but it's it's Cooper. So, um, you know, helping out, taking care of all of Dougie's problems with all these people who want to kill him or all these people that he owes money to, she's, uh, she's a real badass on top of it on top of being a wife that just has to deal with so much of her husband's crap. <laughs> um, you know, Naomi Watts is great. A David Lynch regular. She's the lead in Mulholland Drive and fantastic actress. Uh, I, I really like Janie E and I think, I think she's going to go in A tier, maybe the end of A tier. I think Janie E, oh, funny enough, right next to Diane. I just rewatched the series and I didn't remember until seeing this, uh, just oh, like a week ago when I was rewatching, um, I didn't remember that Janie E and Diane are were are cousins or um, step. Oh no no step stepsisters I think. Um, I didn't remember that at all. So funny that they end up right next to each other too. Uh, yeah okay great. Jean Renault, a baddie antagonist, towards the uh, middle and end of season two 
a really rough patch in the show, but that's not to say that this is a bad character. Again, I kind of skip through a lot of the second half of season two up until maybe like four episodes before the finale. So um, I kind of skip, I, I kind of don't see a lot of Jean Renault because uh, he's such a big part of that chunk of the show that I skip usually. Um, but I do like him and uh, he's kind of like, you know, he's an evil French guy. <laughs> he's got the thick accent and he's a, uh, he's, he's really, uh, you know, nasty kind of guy. Um, not the, not a bad antagonist, but there are also a lot of other antagonists that I like better than him. So let's see, I think he's going to go, you know what? I think he and Blackie are going to be right, right next to each other. I think that's a good spot for him in the B tier, end of the B tier. Okay. Okay. Jerry Horn, good old Jerry. I think the first scene we see him in is one of his best where he brings in the really long French baguette uh, and the, for a brie cheese sandwiches, Ben, and uh, they just dig into it. Mm, that is incredible jam. <laughs> yeah. Ben's brother, he's um, kind of always tagging along for whatever uh, mischief or, or scheme that uh, Ben is trying to do. Uh, they're the Horn Brothers. Uh, Jerry's uh, mostly in season three. He's just having a gigantic <laughs> multiple day long drug trip <laughs> where he's in the forest, uh, lost in the forest and uh, doesn't know where he is. And and I think as a TV character, he's doesn't even feel like himself. Also, when like his foot is talking to him, uh, he doesn't even feel at home uh, within his own self and his own body. <laughs> I definitely like Ben better than Jerry. Um, and I don't know if Jerry, I don't know if I like him enough to be in the A tier. I think Jerry is going to go near the front of the B tier. I feel like we should, there we go. Okay. Okay. That's, that works. Cool. Good old Jerry. Uh, okay. We got Billy Zane here playing John Justice Wheeler. And this character, this is a huge character that I skip. <laughs> not, 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 not because of him in particular, but again, he's just part of that second half of season two that I just like, I just, I skip everything that isn't like Cooper or, you know, has something to do with like the main, what's going on in the, in the town or in the show. I skip like, you know, Ben scenes, I skip James scenes. And, uh, you know, it's a bummer that, uh, Audrey and Cooper were the, they were the main will they, won't they love relationship in the show. And then here comes this guy, John Justice Wheeler. And I know as the fan base, especially, it kind of really bummed everybody out for this new guy to show up and take center stage for Audrey and, and Cooper. And Audrey kind of just like pushes Cooper off, off to the side. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. And then he ends up just leaving anyway and leaving Audrey. So like his character is kind of pointless, to be honest, uh, by the end. So I think Chowderheaded Yokel might be a bit on the harsh side, but but it might be appropriate. Yeah, I think right where I dropped him will work because I don't dislike him as much as these other characters. But um, I, I think I like Chad at least better than him because at least Chad has some comedic moments. Okay. Yeah. Next up, uh, Johnny Horn, uh, Audrey's brother, uh, mentally handicapped. He doesn't have a lot. I don't think he has a ton of screen time in the original, sh in the entire series, really. I know, I remember he's there a, a couple times in the original show. He doesn't really talk or anything. Uh, I remember Laura Palmer uh, tutors him, right? Helps him out. Um, one of the, her good aspects is that she helps out, you know, the disabled. His single scene in season three is heartbreaking because he's all tied up and he can't help his mom being attacked by Richard Horn. Um, and it's really sad that you can tell that he wants to escape those binds and, and help, but he can't. Really sad and uh, a tough watch. Gosh, he really doesn't have much of a presence in the show for me. But I think he might go in C tier, but maybe... I think he might go like just right here. I think, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I don't wanna be mean, but the next, we got a couple of nobodies here. Um, Jonathan Kumagi, or no, Josie's brother, I think. Um, 
he's really, I don't think he's, uh, he shows up like once in a while, but he really doesn't have a lot of screen time. Um, not a bad character, but just not, I, I don't think he's really, I barely remember him, to be honest. I might go chowder-headed yokel for this one. <laughs> I think right after Donna's mom, probably. Yeah. And then kind of the same thing. This is Jones, Thomas, Thomas Eckert's assistant. Um, I absolutely do not remember this character. Uh, I know people, fans watching are probably going to be yelling at me right now, but I don't remember. I mean, I just have here Thomas Eckert's assistant and I don't remember what they do. Ooh, it's like they're, they're, they're not doing anything inherently to piss me off. So I don't think F tier is quite called for here, but possibly the end of the D tier. Chowder headed yokel. Uh, Frank Truman's wife actively annoys me. So I think Jones will go right before her. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to move this guy just right here because I remember him just a little bit better than these two guys. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, we got Josie Packard, classic femme fatale. Kind of acts as like really innocent and like the victim all the time, but she has a lot of schemes and darkness going on secretly. And poor Harry, because Harry and Josie are dating and pretty much um, duping him the entire show. Again, end of season two, or, you know, around the end of season two, David Lynch wasn't there. So the way that they get rid of Josie is just so dumb and terrible where she just ends up in a drawer in a wooden drawer like a sock drawer in one of the hotel rooms and then that amazingly terrible cgi face that she turns into on the doorknob of the drawer i mean that's kind of so bad that it's good and enjoyable and funny josie's a really mixed bag she has like really high highs and then really low lows uh depending on the scene okay i think josie's gonna go in b tier like right in the middle um i think i like her better than catherine and so in between catherine and uh jacques i think that's a good spot for her i would put her higher but she has a really terrible exit to the show like i just mentioned and also, I don't like how she ends up treating Harry. It's really sad. I feel bad for Harry. And also, um, sometimes when she uh, acts like a little too innocent and like the victim, she kind of sometimes comes off as a little pathetic, like, oh, like, poor me. I'm just a, you know, I'm just a girl, you know. What can I do? Everybody's out to get me. Everyone's out to get me. And it, she can, can kind of come off a little like whiny sometimes. Um, but, you know, I still like her. I'm just, these are extreme nitpicks because that's the kind of video this is supposed to be. So, okay, back to the drawer <laughs> with you. Poor Josie. I feel bad the way that they handled her character <laughs> when she exits the show. Great. She's in a sock drawer. Um, okay, we got Lady Slot Addict. This character is in season three. Really a very sweet little side story where Cooper, as Dougie Jones, uh, you know, helps her. Uh, she's, you know, clearly, she almost looks like a homeless woman at first. And she's, uh, yeah, Lady Slot Addict. She's addicted to gambling at the uh, Silver Mustang Casino. And she just has terrible luck. And she's, you know, on her last few quarters. And then Cooper helps her win multiple mega jackpots and it completely turns her life around and this image of her is her last scene in the show where she's she now she's rich and she's taking care of herself she's well dressed she got back in touch with her son her son is back in her life and it's all thanks to coop as dougie so um it's a very sweet heartwarming the character started off literally in the gutter and ends up turning her whole life around and being in a good spot. So that's really nice. Uh, I think um, we're going to go back to the B tier here. I think she's going to go right behind Jade. Oh, oh, also she comes up with the name Mr. Jackpots 
and then everybody calls him Cooper and Mr. Jackpots. So um, a good moment with this character. Uh, yeah, okay, I think that's a good spot for her. We got Lana or Lena Budding Milford. Um, this girl uh, really wants to win the Miss Twin Peaks contest. The mayor really wants to, uh, here, we go, here he is. The mayor really wants her to win and they're like slightly rigged where he's kind of making sure that uh, she wins. She doesn't end up winning. Annie ends up winning. But that's, yeah, that's what her character is meant to do. She's re she's really flirty with older gentlemen because, uh, you know, it helps her get what she wants. So, yeah, uh, not a super memorable character. Again, I barely hate any characters in this show. So even the lowest characters, I don't crazy hate them or anything. But um, she's not going to go very high. I think she's going to go, you know, she might be a chowder-headed yokel because I like Chad better than her. I think second in the D tier. I like her better than Billy Zane's character, but... Okay. Cool. Meanwhile. Hey, we got... I know I've said this a couple times, the face of the show. You know, Cooper is, obviously, but also, you know, just as much as Laura Palmer. You know, Laura is Twin Peaks. There would be no Twin Peaks, obviously, without her. The show wouldn't happen if it wasn't for her and her death. <laughs> and that's the entire mystery. Uh, David Lynch has often said that Laura Palmer's death and the mystery surrounding it is a little goose laying golden eggs. And it's true. And Laura is the big tree of the show. And then all the branches on the tree are all the side stories and all these characters, you know, come out and they all spawn from Laura's mystery and Laura's death. So Laura is the one and uh, she can't possibly go any lower than S tier. Let's see, I think, I think she's gonna go third here. Uh, and then her father, Laura's father, Leland Palmer. If you're watching this without having seen the show, First off, what are you doing? But second off, Leland ends up being uh, a really important character. I feel like I still shouldn't even say <laughs> what he does exactly, but um, you know, uh, Ray Wise, uh, I, I just, I love Ray Wise. Um, he's great in RoboCop also. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he just plays, you know, this this character that he is, he's, he's just fantastic. I really love Leland. Um, he's going right up also in S tier, hello. And uh, I think I like him. I think he's going to go right beside Laura. Right ahead of Audrey. Okay. Leland's going middle of S tier. Perfect. All right. We're in the last couple L's here. Uh, we got Leo Johnson. Leo is a complete dirtbag. Um, he's married to Shelly. He treats her like shit. He treats pretty much everybody like shit. Uh, for a long time, it seems like he could be the main suspect and who killed Laura. There's a large part of season two, I don't think in season one, right? But in season two where he uh, becomes a lot like uh, Cooper as Dougie Jones. He, he's soulless and uh, he, he just becomes empty and uh, he just repeats things. New shoes. <laughs> or something, but yeah. Um, and then, you know, there, there's always this tension and suspense of when is he gonna snap out of it, become himself again, because uh, Shelly and Bobby are just like hanging around him all the time and sticking cake on his face and <laughs> having a party when he, right under his nose. And so like he could snap out of it any second. And then of course he's in the movie. Um, he's one of the last people that sees Laura alive. Yeah, you know, he's right there in the middle of it. Definitely one of the bigger antagonists of the show. I don't love the guy because he's all of his scenes are pretty tough to watch just because he's so abusive and he's such a he's such a dirtbag. So I don't know. I feel like I can't like love him, but I don't I certainly don't dislike him. Let's put him at the end of B for now, but let's see. And I like Leo better than all these people. I think right before uh the hitmen, uh, uh, Hutch and Chantal. And I think I'm gonna move the slot addict lady to right, uh, like right there, yeah. I like Leo better than the slot addict lady. Um, and the experiment isn't really a character, but it is cool, so. <laughs> um, okay, there's Leo. Uh, cousin Lil, 
Gordon's mother's sister's girl. Jet, you're a surprise. She doesn't have any dialogue, but um, she, uh, her scene is really important at the beginning of the movie because she's teaching all of us how to interpret David Lynch's clues throughout the series and the movie. She wasn't in the original tier. Uh, I definitely added her, and this is the picture I chose. Um, yeah, Cousin Lil um, doesn't have a ton of screen time, but uh, is rather important, I'd say. So, And her scene's really entertaining, so... I don't think I like her as much to put her in the A tier, but I think she's gonna go pretty high on the B tier. Um, let's see here. Let me put her uh, right here just for a second while I look at all these other characters and compare. You know, I placed Cousin Lil right here just, just to place her there for a second, but I think the exact spot, I think there, I think that spot is exactly where I'd place her. Cool. Kinda higher up on the B tier. Both wonderful and strange. Okay. Great. That's Cousin Lil. Who's the lady with the log? I would call her the log lady. Okay. Another character that you could say is the face of the show. There's only a couple. Uh, but um, the log lady, Margaret Lanterman. Um, I love the log lady. She's great. Uh, who doesn't? You know, who doesn't like her? Her scenes in season three are just heartbreaking because um, I believe that, uh, you know, Catherine Coulson is, the, is her actor's name. And um, I understand that she actually passed away not too long after they filmed her scenes for the return. Really sad and tough to watch. And, uh, you know, everybody loves the log lady. How couldn't you? So um, I think she's definitely going in A tier. Um, let's see. Let's see where in A tier. I think she's going to go pretty high up on A tier. Log Lady goes towards the top of A tier. Damn fine. Damn fine character. My pal, Kimmy Robertson, uh, the voice of Ollie in my cartoon Ollie and Scoops. She's the lead. Here she is as Lucy in Twin Peaks. Also, not just saying this because because we're friends, but uh, also just, you know, straight up one of my favorite characters in the show. I love uh, Lucy. She's so adorable. And <laughs> I love how frustrated she gets with all the dummies around her. But then at the same time, she can be really spacey. And, uh, you know, she's always over, over explaining things. And uh, really anybody could understand. She feels like she has to explain to the police that the blinking light means that the person is on hold and you have to press the button to get the light to stop blinking. And then you can talk to the person and like, she, you know, she just goes on and on and on uh, and she doesn't need to. And then I, I love in season three. Oh my God. In season three, she just like has a trouble understanding cell phones and you think it's just a joke, uh, a little quick joke scene at the beginning of the show, but then it completely pays off in by the end. And uh, Lucy, you know, saves uh, one of the major characters that saves the day at the end of the show. And I just love that David Lynch gave her her character that opportunity. She's a couple with Andy. They're just such an adorable couple. And then um, in season three, we meet, we finally meet their son, Wally Brando. And like, he's amazing. So uh, what's not to love about Lucy? Andy, are you there? I'm very confused. Who am I talking to? This is between S and A tier for me. Let's place Lucy right here and uh, I'll look through and see where she should go. I think Lucy's gonna go way at the front, but right behind Albert. I think that's a good spot for her. Okay, cool. And that does it for the L's. All right, we're hitting the M's now. Maddie Ferguson, played by the same actress. Is Laura Palmer, Cheryl Lee. She plays Laura Palmer's cousin. Yeah, cousin Maddie. I like that she's there for Laura's funeral and she gets kind of wrapped up in James and Donna's side story of trying to figure out the mystery for themselves. So um, Maddie's kind of along for the ride there. You know, dresses up as Laura to fool Dr. Jacoby. <laughs> really sad ending for her because she gets killed by the murderer. And it was a good chance to have uh, Cheryl Lee get to be in the show, even though her main character is dead. So, uh, yeah, Maddie, let's see here. Maddie would go 
<laughs> kind of want to lump her along with like James and Donna because that's most of her scenes is with them. But I like Donna better than her and I think I might like James better than her. Um, I like Josie better than her. So she might go like maybe right, right around here. Maybe two different Cheryl Lee characters right next to each other. I think I like Carrie Page better than her. Um, yeah, I think right here is good for Maddie. Cool. All right. Um, we got Maggie Brown, Dispatch, uh, one of the newer members of the Twin Peaks Sheriff Station team. Yeah, not too much here. Um, she does have a good scene uh, with Chad where, where Chad's just being, you know, Chad, just a jerk. <laughs> and um, Maggie kind of stands up to him a little bit. But um, yeah, doesn't have a huge character. Um, she's nice, though. I don't dislike her at all. But she might end up in the C tier. Hmm. Let's see. Um, yeah, she's not going to go too much higher. Maybe like right after Johnny. I think that works. Cool. Um, we got Marjorie Green. She's one of the very first characters we see in season three. Um, and she's kind of a goofball. Um, she's very uh, <laughs> absent-minded, I would say. Kind of a knucklehead, mostly there for yeah, comedic effect. Uh, not too much to her. She has a cute little, I think it's a chihuahua, cute little dog. Kind of uh, like barely any help to the police. So a teensy bit frustrating, but mostly just there to be silly, just for comedy. I don't know, she might end up in C tier. Let's see. Uh, Let's see, I think she'd go, um, you know, I think right next to the last character here. Yeah, I think that's a good spot for her. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, Mary Reber, this is a real person, like in the real world and not a, char a TV character. This is the real life owner of the Palmer house in real life. Uh, but she's in the show. Uh, she's in the very last scene of season three, The Return. And I, you know, hey, she shows up in the show. So I figured I would add her and I added her to the list. And she's not in the original tier list. I'm not bad at all. I mean, she's not a professional actor. So you can kind of tell she's not an actor. <laughs> so, uh, but um, it is kind of a tense scene because you're wondering like who she's talking to off of the side it's kind of creepy that we don't you know it, obviously probably her husband but it's it's kind of creepy that we don't see who she's talking to and don't even hear them really uh, it is a major scene that she's a part of so yeah it's 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 weird to rank a, a an actual human being <laughs> amongst all these tv characters but um let's see um i think she's gonna go right in the middle of c tier like, I think I like her better than the mayor. But not as much as Major Briggs' wife. Very, very specific here, but I think that's a... I don't know. That just feels right. We'll leave it at that. Mike Nelson. This is Bobby's best friend or Bobby's crony. I think he, he actually does show up in season three, but kind of like he's not really connected to the rest of the show. And it seems like, I don't know, he's kind of doofy, kind of acting like a cool kid, but not really. A major problem is in season two where they just kind of had nothing for him to do. So they tried to give him something to do in dating the version of Nadine after she gets hit on the head and thinks she's a teenager. Teenage Nadine and Mike become a couple. And then, you know, Nadine snaps out of it in the season two finale and leaves Mike in the dust because she has no idea who he is. Um, so he kind of gets the bad end of the stick, but also like he's not a very great character to begin with. Not very deep at all. He's just, you know, the main bad boy's little buddy, pretty much. So yeah, I think I think he might be, mm, is D too harsh? I don't know. I, I, I think I like Chad better than Mike, but yeah. Okay, I like these other characters at least a little bit more than him, so I, w I was expecting him to go and see, but uh, I guess he's a chowder-headed yokel. <laughs> there you go. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to move these guys. I, I 
I like Chad and Mike better than these guys right here. I'm gonna move these guys, these couple guys here. Move them to D tier. Actually, I think I'm gonna move him too. We'll do this. There we go. Okay, we've got Mike, the one-armed man, a denizen of the of the lodge of the white and black lodges. He's kind of part of a bigger ensemble of the lodges in the original series and the movie. But then in season three, he really, like his role gets much, much, much bigger because we don't have the little man in the, in the return, uh, Mrs. Tremont, David Lynch's son, Pierre here. They're not in it. So um, in the return, I think Mike, the one-armed man, is kind of uh, picking up a lot of the slack for a bunch of characters that are... Uh, no longer there, half of which because their actors are dead, like like her here. But um, he's he has a really cool voice, really like sinister, kind of deep, kind of raspy voice. Uh, good antagonist, even though he's not really an antagonist. It's great when he's, uh, you know, kind of explaining Bob. And yeah, he is a good character, Mike, the one-armed man. I think um, I think he might go an eight here. Uh, but let's see. We'll put him at the end here and see who I like him better than. I think Mike is going to go right up ahead of Hawk. Okay, we got Miriam Sullivan, a uh, school teacher. And uh, her main role is that she sees Richard Horn run over a poor little kid and kill him, which is a really tough scene to watch. But she sees, she's the, the only eyewitness. And so she gets the crap beat out of her by Richard and uh, feels pretty bad for this character. And then she's in the hospital and that's the last time we see her. She's like in a coma. <laughs> so um, she doesn't really get to shine too much beyond that. Let's see. She might be going in the C tier. You know, I feel like I, weirdly enough, I feel like I like Chad better than her. So I think she's a chowder-headed yokel. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't feel like that's not very fair since she... She gets treated very badly in this show, but um, yeah, we'll have her there for now. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, okay, we got another real-life person, Monica Bellucci, the actress, the real-life person, Monica Bellucci. And uh, she, uh, I added her. She wasn't in the original tier list, but she's a major part of Gordon Cole's dream and asks, who is the dreamer? She looks right at the audience. She's talking to us when she's asking these things. She is a major part of that that uh, really surreal dream that Gordon has, um, and it's pretty cool. I believe she's that. That's all she's in is that one dream sequence. So um, let's see. I think she might go in under. I think she might go in the B category. Okay, I like Ike better. I like Howard better, or Harold. I mean, Annie. French girl. I think that's a good spot. Okay. Uh, another creature here, but this is the mother. That That's the credit of this character. But it's the mother of all evil because um, this, this creature comes out of the nuclear blast of the atomic bomb testing and births Bob. It feels pretty weird to put the mother of all evil like super high on the list but i think she's cooler than the experiment this person here so let's place her right here for a second and then see who i like the mother better than doesn't have any lines but it's pretty creepy and pretty damn cool just one of those great creepy david lynch creatures or maybe it makes sense to have this character right by the experiment but i like this character just a little bit better they're very similar they even look similar but the mother is cooler because the, just the shot is cooler and Bob being in this egg that comes out of this jelly <laughs> that's coming out of the mother's mouth. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's just keep these two side by side. White Black Lodge Denison, Mrs. Tremont slash Chalfont. It seems like she has two different names. Again, yeah, very mysterious. She is Pierre's grandmother. She does not like Garmin Bosia. She does not like cream corn. I requested no cream corn. She seems to be, you know, a positive uh, guardian for Pierre here. So, and she uh, does show up, I think, the most in the movie. 
You know, she's very mysterious. And I like this actress. Uh, she, you know, she's actually in a lot of David Lynch's other movies, too, like Blue Velvet. I think she's in Wild at Heart. She's kind of one of those actresses where you're like, oh, hey, it's her. Is she in the Mouth of Madness? I think she's in John Carpenter's Mouth of Madness, too. Where would Mrs. Tremont, Mrs. Chalfont go? Definitely B tier, but let's see where. I think she's going to go right in between Jacques and Josie. And I'm going to include Pierre Tremont right next to her. I think I like him just a teensy bit better than her. And now looking at this, I think I'm going to move Catherine a couple slots down because I like these two, uh, Carrie Page and uh, Maddie, a little bit better than Catherine. I think that feels good. Um, okay, great. And then, yeah, Pierre Tremont is, is uh, the grandson studying magic, David Lynch's actual son in real life. And, you know, looks just like him. <laughs> so another kind of stand-in for, for David Lynch himself. So there you go. My arm's asleep. Okay, we got Nadine Hurley. Negative Nadine. She's got the eye patch and she's only seeing half of the half of her life and half of the picture. Motivated by money and not motivated by love from her husband, Big Ed. She's very materialistic and only cares about making a quick buck. And, and she wants to achieve that through her drapes, her silent running drapes. Um, very, uh, yeah, obsessive and just a weirdo. And uh, uh, again, season two, didn't know what to do with this character. So they suddenly made her get bonked on the head like Fred Flintstone and thinks that she's someone else, um, thinks that she's a, a teenager back in high school. It's all very strange. She's still entertaining, though. Completely silent. And then I love in season three where after so many years of, of manipulation and keeping Big Ed away from his true love, Norma, she finally gives him his freedom. And uh, that was really nice. So I like Nadine. I think she'll be a B tier character. Um, let's see. I think she's around James, possibly. I think I like James just a teensy bit better than her. Okay, there you go, Nadine. Okay, Nido, or Nado, depending on if you're David Lynch or if you're some of the other characters in the show. Yeah, this is, uh, well, it turns out to be the real Diane, who's uh, kind of trapped in this identity prison here. But um, yeah, she's blind, obviously, doesn't have eyes, can't see, and she only speaks in these really creepy, I, I love it, like this weird, like really breathy, gasps and like exhales and inhales like <laughs> it's really creepy and uh only you know only in the a great the great way that david lynch can make it good character and then andy saves her andy uh so i'm gonna place her um i think we got another b tier character but hmm, i think i'm gonna place her right next to the uh here and Mrs. and his grandmother, the Tremonts. Yeah, that works. Cool. I gotta be completely honest. I don't remember little Nikki. This is Nikki, apparently little Nikki, and I don't remember who this character is. I'm sorry. I'm a bad Twin Peaks fan, <laughs> but um, uh, I can't even speak on this character. Maybe I should actually look them up <laughs> before doing a video like this. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna look them up really quick. Okay, I remember now. Um, <laughs> where is he here? Dick Tremaine. It's like a little brother program. Uh, Dick Tremaine wants to prove to Lucy that he's good with kids and he, like, quote, adopts Nikki. But still... It's not a very substantial role. I don't know. I think Nikki's going to go under chowder-headed yokel. Um, let's see. I think, um, gosh, I just barely remember this kid. Um, I think we're going to have to go, like, here, right underneath uh, Donna's mom. I think Donna's mom can go up a couple, couple notches here. 
But she's still a chowder-headed yokel. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we got Miss Twin Peaks herself, Norma Jennings, the owner of the Double R Diner, the greatest spot in town with the best cherry pie and coffee and one of the biggest sources of love in the town. Uh, she's great. Um, uh, you know, wants to be with Big Ed. Still, I guess, married to um, uh, Hank here. Bad boy. So, um, yeah, but Norma's great. Uh, Norma, let's see. I wonder if she's an A-tier character. I mean, how can you not like Norma? She's really sweet and she's smart. Very supportive. Very helpful. Like, helps other, especially Shelly. She's always kind of there for her. Uh, a very like a very like mother motherly kind of role um yeah very caring kind sweet let's see um i think we're gonna put normal right yeah i think that works cool okay we've got the 1956 girl falls asleep and lets the frog moth enter her mouth <laughs> i added this character she wasn't in the original tier and um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure why I didn't add the boy that she was talking to, but um, he has even less screen time than she does. But I feel like this girl, you know, deserves to be here. A lot of people think that this is young Sarah Palmer. I don't think this is a young version of any established Twin Peaks character. I think it's just a girl in 1956. She's nice, she's cool. And the shot of the frog moth going in her mouth is <laughs> amazing and creepy and just fantastic. <laughs> Very bizarre. I love it. I think I'm going to put her at the lower part of the B tier. Maybe maybe right next to this uh, the hysterical woman driver. Yeah, I think that works for now. We've got two number characters, 1956 girl and then the 119 girl. 119 lady. This character is rough. Uh, she is a drug addict. She seems to be insane. Uh, alcoholic. She has a little kid, a uh, son, who she does not pay attention to or take care of. All she says is 119, which is 911 backwards, and white and black lodge denizens all speak backwards. So I think this is to show that she just has a lot of evil and negativity inside of her. And she's just constantly screaming 911 backwards because she needs help, I guess. <laughs> she's not in a very good place. And it's especially sad that she's bringing her poor little son down with her. Yeah, her scenes are kind of rough, kind of in the same way that Chad's are, but Chad is at least has funny moments. This lady does not, so I think she's going to go <clears throat> maybe definitely D tier, but let's see. Yeah, I think right where I placed her is going to work. Yeah. Chowder-headed yokel. <laughs> and speaking of yokels, we got Pete. Pete Martell, played by Jack Nance, who is played the main character Henry in David Lynch's seminal film, Eraserhead. Pete is wonderful. I love Pete, and I love Jack Nance, too. I think he's in every one of David Lynch's projects up until his sad and very mysterious death right after Twin Peaks, the movie, in the mid-90s. So, um, but Pete is great. I think his most famous line is the fish in the percolator. Fellas, don't drink that coffee. There was a fish in the percolator. And, uh, oh, and of course, he's the first character to discover Laura Palmer's body, dead body wrapped in plastic, like a TV dinner. So, um, yeah, Pete's great. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, and he's a great source of comic relief throughout the show. I think he's going A tier. Let's see though. Let's see where in, in the A tier. I'm gonna place Pete right here. Which is funny because Pete and this funny old man, Banker, have a terrific deleted scene. This picture of the old man is actually from that scene where he's it's more like this, where they're looking at each other on these on this side, and he's uh, this old man is yelling at Pete because he wants the two by four. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a great spot for Pete. Phil Bisbee, uh, this is um, I think the intern, or at least one of Dougie Jones's co workers at the insurance company. And he is one of the first characters to see Dougie come to work, Cooper as Dougie, and uh, kind of just have to help him getting through the day and uh, escort him into being in the right room at the right meetings. Well, 
I'm pretty sure he's an intern because he's getting everybody coffee, or at least an assistant. So not a huge character, but an enjoyable one. Um, I'm going to put him in, let's see, I'm pretty sure B tier, but let's see where. I think maybe right in between Burns and Jade. I think that's a good spot for him. All right, we've got Philip Jeffries, played by the legendary David Bowie. Um, we don't see Philip until the movie. That scene with him talking about Judy and everything, or not wanting to talk about Judy, that created the biggest mystery since Who Killed Laura Palmer. And for 25 years, everybody wondering who Judy was and kind of elevated Judy and Philip Jeffrey to the big question and hopefully the answer to everyone's questions. And what a small scene, literally lengthwise, but such a big and memorable character. It was a dream. We live inside a dream. And Philip Jeffries also, you know, was Gordon Cole's partner in a way that Coop and Albert are partners. Philip and Gordon Cole were partners. So, And then he's in a giant coffee machine in season three because David Bowie had died already. Um, so someone else is voicing him while he's in the coffee machine. But uh, still, even though he's in a coffee machine, he's still entertaining. <laughs> Let's see, uh, definitely an A tier, but let's see. This is kind of tough. Um, do I like him better than Diane or the Fireman? Uh, like I feel, I, the more I think about it, the more like, I feel like I should maybe put him like back here. Still an A tier, just not as high as I thought. No, cause I feel like I like him better than the one-armed man. And Janie E. Or I like him better than Diane. Okay, let's keep him right here for now. I think that feels okay. Okay, we got, um, I believe I added her. She wasn't in the original tier list. Uh, Phyllis Hastings, um, Bill Hastings' wife. Kind of, I don't want to be mean, kind of a nothing character. She's there to kind of scold Bill a little bit when he's in prison because she knows that he's been cheating on her. And then she just gets immediately killed by Mr. C. Doesn't really have enough time to shine, really. She's not bad, but um, again, kind of a, kind of nothing. Like, I think we're going chowder-headed yokel. I, I feel like I'm being too hard, but just sort of a character. I'm, I, I just don't, I don't feel anything for her. So um, let's see. Okay, I think that's where we're going to stay for now. Okay, we've got Ray Monroe, I believe. He is the crony or henchman of Mr. C's that lasts the longest. Oh no, you know what? That would be Hutch and Chantel, but Ray lasts almost as long as the longest <laughs> of Mr. C's cronies. This guy's got a really unique face. I really like <laughs> I really like him. Good good antagonist. Tries to double cross Mr. C a few times. Doesn't live to tell the tale. Ends up in the lodge because he puts the ring on before he gets killed by Mr. C. Ray Monroe. Let's see. I think um, I think we got ourselves a both wonderful and strange B tier character here. Okay, I like him better than Harold. I like him better than Ike. I like him better than the slot lady. Let's put him right here. Yeah, because I like Leo better than Ray Monroe. Okay. And now we got Red, another another bad guy. <laughs> and sadly, uh, Shelly is seeing him. Even though she has, Bobby has grown up and become a good cop and an all-around decent guy, Shelly just can't help herself and still marries herself to bad boys and bad decisions. Red has a really good scene with Richard Horn where he flips a coin, but other than that, He's not there too much in the return. So, I don't know. He's kind of reminds me of Ray Monroe Light. Let's start with, uh, I was gonna put him right next to Ray Monroe, but, and then go down the list, but I'm pretty sure I like all these B tier characters more than Red. So, you know, it kind of reminds me of Hank. Um, maybe I'll put him, maybe I'll put him here. I like this detect these detectives better than him though. I think that's a good spot for red. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got Renzo. This guy is awesome. He's 
played by Derek Mears, and I met him. I know Derek Mears from Channel 101, which has been going on since like 2003. And I was a huge fan of Channel 101 growing up in Tucson, Arizona, in college growing up, <laughs> more like college years. But then when I moved out here and started going to Channel 101, Derek was there and he is, uh, you know, he play. I, I believe he plays, he's like the current Jason, like the Jason movies. And this guy is just ginormous. He is huge and super strong and just ripped, but he is like the nicest guy you've ever met. He's just a complete, I hate to say teddy bear, but you know what I mean? Like those kind of, you know, gentle giant kind of guys. I, I think the best Mr. C scene in the entire third season is the scene with Renzo where they arm wrestle. Um, it's such a great suspenseful scene. Yeah, Renzo rules. Ooh, I don't know if I like him enough to put him in A tier, but definitely I would say on the high side of the B tier. Let's see here. I like him better than these characters up until about, up until about here. I think I like Carrie Page better than uh, Renzo, but eh, yeah. I think I like Maddie better, but I don't think I like Catherine as, as much as Renzo. So I think we'll stick to that. Cool. Um, Richard Horn, uh, oof, the offspring of Audrey Horn and Mr. C. <laughs> and this guy is about as horrible a human being as you could possibly imagine. I don't even need to list all the horrible things he does in the show, but he is a bad egg. He is a rotten kid. It's weird because it's not like entertaining evil. It's really just kind of like uncomfortable and sad evil. They did a really great job at making this kid just an evil piece of shit. And there's just like, he has no redeeming qualities. Like I've mentioned a few times, Chad is kind of in the same boat, but at least he has some funny moments. But Dick Horn is, uh, oof. It's, it's a rough, it's a rough one. So I feel like by nature, he should go in the F tier, but I don't hate it. I feel like F tier darkness within is the best way to describe his character. But I guess, you know, ultimately this is meant for, you know, how entertaining is the character to me? And how much do I like seeing them on the screen? I guess that's what this is all about. So. To be honest, I don't like seeing Richard Horn that much because of how, how rotten he is. The only time I really like seeing him is when he finally gets his comeuppance and he fucking explodes. Because at least he's getting his comeuppance for all... I don't actually... I, I think he actually doesn't get enough comeuppance for all the pain and suffering he caused. But, um... Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna keep... I'm gonna keep Richard right here. The least worst character of the F tier. I think that works. Okay, hey, Dick Tremaine, speaking of dicks, um, Dick Tremaine is in the first couple seasons and he is trying to win the heart of Lucy and uh, Dick and Andy are kind of going head to head um, in, uh, to win Lucy's affections. Um, I know a lot of people really like Dick Tremaine and a lot of people are really annoyed by him. I... Uh, I don't want to say I fall right in the middle because he is funny. I do find him funny, but he kind of irritates me more than makes me laugh. It's very much like Chad where it's irritating, but he, ha he has some funny moments. So uh, I think I might put him right, right, at, right um, after Chad. Chowder-headed yokel. I don't know if that's gonna, I don't know if that's a hot take because I know a lot of people like Dick Tremaine <laughs> and might put him like in the B tier, you know, like over here, but I don't know. He's just kind of a weenie, <laughs> but he has, he has some funny moments. Okay, we've got Rodney Mitchum, the other Mitchum brother. We've got, where do we put Bradley? He's up here. So I guess, I guess I'd put them next to each other, but who do I like better? I think I like Rodney better. And then also, am I... Do I like Rodney better than 
I don't think I like him. Okay, yeah, I think putting him right next to Bradley is fine. People are under a lot of stress, Bradley. Cool. Um, we've got two Roadhouse entertainers. We've got the Roadhouse MC and then Roadhouse singer, played by Julie Cruz. I believe she sings in both series. She sings in the original show and The Return, The World Turns. And uh, that's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite David Lynch and Angelo Badalamenti songs. So uh, why not? I consider them both characters. I think I added both of them. I don't think they were in the original tier list. The Roadhouse MC might have been, but I definitely added Julie Cruz. So uh, yeah, and then the the um, Roadhouse MC, you know, you know, has a lot of charm, and I like how he introduces all the bands coming up. They don't really have characters beyond that. And then Julie Cruz is biker bar kind of a singer, beautiful voice. Let's see, out of the two of them, I think I like Julie Cruz better. But uh, once they're up here, let's see. I think they're both gonna go under B tier. And um, let's see, let's see where they should be placed. Okay, looking at all these characters, I think I like these two Roadhouse entertainers better than these characters, but right before Ray Monroe, I think. I think that works for both of them. Okay, Roger Hardy. Um, I believe this character shows up in season two right after the killer is revealed. Because of Cooper saving Audrey, this is the guy that shows up, suspends uh, Cooper as an FBI agent. Again, this character shows up in a the very spotty second half of season two that I just kind of, I skip a lot of it. Yeah, this guy doesn't have a huge impact on things. I think uh, I think he's going on the D tier, but let's see where. Um, he really just, it's kind of like all these characters right here, I just kind of don't feel anything for them. N not, not nothing good, but nothing bad. Um, well, he strips Cooper of his FBI position and uh, that stinks. So I'm not on this guy's side. So I think I'm gonna place him like, maybe like right here. Uh, Ronette Pulaski, Laura's friend. She was with her the night that she was killed. And, uh, you know, if they switched places, the big question would be who killed Ronette Pulaski. But Laura's the one who died, and, and, and Ronette is the, um, the one that survives. And with her help, you know, they end up finding out a lot about that night, finding out a lot about Bob, uncovering the mystery. Uh, she's throughout the show, but I think her major role is in the movie. Or at least seeing her, you know, not all beaten up and in a coma and being driven to insanity from all the trauma she experienced. Um, but yeah, she's a good character. Um, I think we've got B tier for Ronette. Let's see. Let's see who I like better than her, though. I think Ronette is around the Maddie Ferguson area. I think I like Renzo better. I think I like Catherine better. Okay, that works. Um... Ruby, uh, this is, uh, she's played by Charlene Yi, um, who I really like, funny, funny lady. Uh, she definitely wasn't in the original tier list. I added her. I don't think she has a line except a scream. And this is, <laughs> here's the picture, here's her screaming. But she's at the roadhouse and I think all just the evilness of all the patrons in the roadhouse, they just build and build and build and they're too much for her. And she lets out an agonizing scream. And I think that's how a lot of how we're supposed to be feeling too, of just the rotten, horrible place Twin Peaks has turned out to be uh, by the time season three rolls around. Um, it used to be this town of, of balance and love and friendship. And it's just like, you can just feel the evil just seething in this town uh, in 2017 compared to 1990. Um, and I think that's all displayed really nicely in Ruby here, who just can't take it anymore. And she just screams in agony. And I think that's a good way. I think that's a good reaction to, to how things are in the town now. But she doesn't have a huge character. She's only on screen for about a minute. So um, she's not going to go very high. I think she'll go in the C tier, but maybe like halfway through. 
I think this might be a good spot. Maybe right before. You know what? I think I like her more than than these characters here. And I like. I think I'm gonna move. Major Briggs's wife right there. Okay. Okay, that does it for the R's, and we are on to the S's with Sam and Tracy. Uh, see, Sam and Tracy here both kind of work as a duo rather than separate characters. You know, Sam is one of the very first characters we see in The Return. Um, he's been hired to watch <laughs> this big, empty glass box. 24-7, always watching the glass box. And then uh, Tracy uh, uh, visits him with coffee. Little little love and dream fuel for from from the coffee she brings. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to classify both of them kind of together. Yeah, then they end up, then the experiment right over here ends up uh, <laughs> taking care of them. Yeah, I like them. Let's see. Um, I think, yeah, let's do like kind of lower tier, lower side of the B tier here. For Sam and Tracy. All right. Cool. My kitty Ripley is here. I wonder if you can pick up her her purring on the microphone if she gets close enough. <laughs> Might have been able to hear that slight purring on the mic there. Um, we got up next... Sam Stanley from the movie. Like Albert, uh, he's also a forensics specialist. Kind of a rookie cop compared to um, Chet Desmond, who he gets teamed up with at the beginning of the film. Um, <clears throat> Sam, Sam, Sam Stanley, he's got a lot of funny little quirks that are, that are pretty humorous. Um, but right this moment, I'm going to put him right next to Chet, and then I think I like him better than Chet. I like both of them, obviously, but uh, Sam might be like just a few characters ahead. He might be around here. I think we're gonna place Sam right right there for now, Sam Stanley. And, uh, oh, we got Sarah Palmer next, uh, Laura Palmer's mom. Boy, we really see her, her character in the original series. And then by uh, the return, she's almost a completely different character. And we can see a little bit of this drastic change in her personality in the last episode of season two. But by the return, 25 years later, uh, it seems that she's just, her soul is completely black and evil from, I'm guessing, just all the guilt letting her daughter grow up abused by Leland and then ultimately killed. And um, I think all that guilt has just turned her soul black, which we see in a great scene when she's at this bar and she opens her face up and it's just blackness and kind of a really depressing character <laughs> by the return too. Um, she All she does is watch violence on TV and, on a loop and smokes uh, like a chimney stack. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I think... Um, She's the Palmer family member that's kind of more on the depressing and creepy side, um, other than like the entertainingly creepy side. Um, and she's definitely more depressing in the, uh, just letting all these horrible things happen to her, the rest of her family. So I don't know if she kind of just doesn't do anything about it. It's a, it's a little less entertaining, I guess, than seeing a, a Laura or a Leland Palmer scene. Um, so I don't think she's going to go as high as they are up here. I think she's going to go more maybe in the B, B tier. Um, let's see. I'm going to put her at the end here for a sec and figure out where she goes in here. Hmm. I think I'm going to put Sarah Palmer right around Ronette or Catherine. Maybe. I think I like Ronette better. I think this right here works. Yeah. Senorita Dido, or possibly Senorita Ditto, depending on how you'd like to pronounce it. Like an assistant to the fireman, to the giant. When the fireman births, I guess, <laughs> the concept of Laura Palmer out of his face, <laughs> um, the Senorita translates that to the screen. Yeah, she doesn't have any lines. Um, it, the, she's from the infamous episode eight. Really atmospheric, really cool, really moody. Love that whole episode. 
of course. Um, so let's see where the Senoria Dido should go. I'm thinking maybe just around here. Like, I think if she had more, I think if she had any dialogue or just more to her, I would just like her more. But just because of the small amount uh, of, of screen time she gets, um, she's probably not going much higher than uh, lower B tier. Um, I think that feels good. I think I'm going to move Heidi a little further down. Okay. <clears throat> little bit of rearrangement there. I think that feels a bit better. Okay, Shelly Johnson. Who doesn't love Shelly? Isn't in the return as much as I'd like, but that can go for a lot of characters, actually. Yeah, I'd say a major character in the original series. Hello! I was wondering if I might trouble you for a cup of strong black coffee. Waitress at the Double R Diner, married to Leo, but cheating on him with Bobby. <laughs> yeah, and uh, all around good girl, but sad, especially in the return where now that Bobby's like a good guy and a cop and everything, she just uh, she really just seems to be attracted to bad boys and guys that treat her terribly. <laughs> and then, of course, her own daughter uh, is affected twice as hard. So, um, but Shelly is a great character, and uh, I think she might be, I think she might be A tier. Uh, let's see here. Where would I place her? I'm going to place her at the end of A tier here. And then, do I like her better than, than Norma? I think I do. Norma and uh, Shelly, they both, um, you know, share a lot of screen time. They're kind of a nice duo on their own, too. So the both of them are pretty much the faces of the double R collectively. So I think that's a good spot for Shelly. Okay. Uh, we got Sheriff Cable, complete opposite of the Twin Peaks Sheriff Department. The entire staff at the Deer Meadow Sheriff Station are all complete assholes. Um, but they're so... They're such assholes that it's funny and entertaining. Um, and then uh, I mentioned also Sheriff Cable also has a great deleted scene uh, in the movie where he's actually fighting and getting in a fist fight with Chet Desmond. Gets his ass kicked and it's really great. <laughs> I think B tier for sure, but let's see where exactly. Now I'm gonna put Sheriff Cable around here. Maybe right ahead of the... I'm going to put him right here. Okay. Sonny Jim Jones. Janie E's and uh, Dougie Jones's son, Sonny Jim. Really cute kid. He has to kind of go through a lot because the real Dougie Jones being kind of a lousy dad. Cooper as Dougie Jones is really empty <laughs> and soulless and... Uh, for the first time in Sonny Jim's life, he becomes a, a, a dad that he uh, connects with and loves. So thankfully he gets a happy ending. So let's see, Sonny Jim. It's kind of weird ranking a kid amongst all these other characters. I know there's Pierre, but uh, um, let me see here. I think Sonny Jim will go in B, but probably on the lower side. Let's see. I think he'll go, um, I don't even really need to think about it that much. I think he'll go around Annie, maybe. I think, like, right in between these characters here. Oh, boy. Okay, Stephen Burnett. Um, <clears throat> I really don't like this character, actually. <laughs> like, he is, like, his scenes are actually, like, piss me off. Like, they're painful be because he's just such a fuck-up abusive and a drug addict and just like a horrible horrible person similar to Richard Horn but at, at least Richard's like kind of kind of entertaining in like a horrible way but Steven is just like like pathetic and like like he's just as evil as Richard Horn but just more pathetic and less I guess entertaining about it so I want to just say kudos to his actor here for being able to play such a horrible kid. <laughs> um, you know, it does take talent to make uh, you really hate someone's character. 
Yeah, he is definitely going an F, dead last. Yeah, I really dislike Steven. <laughs> I know that's the point. These uh, couple characters here are pretty rough. I think we're just gonna stick with that, with F tier here. Okay, moving on. Sylvia Horn, Ben Horn's wife, really doesn't have a huge presence in the original show. I know that she's there just kind of like scoffing and looking annoyed near the beginning of the show when Jerry and Ben are eating those big baguette brie sandwiches. Her one scene in the return is going back to Richard here. Uh, her one scene in the return is really a tough watch because she's like elderly woman now and then Richard busts in and beats the crap out of her and robs her and steals everything out of her purse and it's just kind of you've got a bummer scene in the return and then little to no presence in the original show so um sorry sylvia but i'm pretty sure you're going under in the uh, chowder headed yokel um let's see where though you she really doesn't have much of a presence here i think i'm gonna put her like right here maybe right behind the teacher yeah i think that works okay um, Special Agent Tammy Preston, really cool new character added to season three. I guess on the FBI front, she's kind of Cooper's replacement. The team was like Gordon, Cole, Albert, and Coop. But now this is at a point where Cooper's been missing for 25 years. So Tammy kind of takes his place, um, but she she's young, she's bright, she's a great a team player. And uh, having said all those positive things, I think she's... I think she's gonna go high B tier though. Let's see. I think she'll go around Nido. Maybe like right here. That feels like a good spot. Great. Okay, um, this this one is in the original tier list, but it's well, it's Philip Jeffries, but coffee machine Philip Jeffries. Um, so I don't know if we're really considering that two different characters or David Bowie passed away uh, before filming so this is a different person voicing him but it, it is meant to be the same character so i don't know i can't really tell much of a difference so i'm just gonna put him uh right next to philip jeffries here because that's the same same character he's just in a in a big coffee percolator machine uh okay uh teresa banks she is uh the girl that gets murdered a year before Laura Palmer gets murdered. And not a very good person. She's She sleeps around, prostitutes herself. Leland is cheating on his family with her. She played also plays a really great dead body version of the character when uh, Chet and uh, Sam Stanley are examining her dead body. Um, let's see. I think she's gonna go maybe, maybe either top of C tier she might go top of C tier, but let's see. I might I might like her more than maybe the last couple people in the B tier. You know, I think she just barely makes it in the B tier. And I'm, I think I'm going to move Blackie to C tier. You know, I like Blackie. I think Blackie should go like here. Ooh, she's moving down. Because um, I'm just like, because I'm like, oh yeah, I like that character more. I like that character more. Um, hmm. I'm going to move. Yeah, Blackie, sorry, but you just got moved down about 12 characters. Okay. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, the arm, the little man from another place. Mike's left arm evolved into a person. <laughs> um, I've said this about a few characters in the show so far, but the little man is also going to be considered, kind of considered the face of Twin Peaks. Uh, really iconic character here. Um, I believe played by Mike Anderson. All of his dialogue is in reverse. Um, we all love when he dances. Uh, yeah, great character. I love the arm. You know, a lot of people either call him the little man from another place, but in the movie, he he's, says he, he calls himself the arm. So there you go. Gosh, is he good enough for the S tier? I think he's going to go in the A tier. Damn fine probably pretty high up there. Let's see. You know, I think I like him more than these characters right here. He might be going lower S tier. Do I like him better than Lucy? 
Okay, I think I'm moving Albert to S tier. And the arm right there. No, uh, yeah. Er, er, okay, I think I like Lucy just a teensy bit more. Okay. Congrats, Albert. You made hello. <laughs> and I also am not really, because see, now we have the arm's evolution. Uh, same character, but uh, now it's a brain tree in season three. So, I mean, it's supposed to be the same character. So again, I think I'm going to just kind of lump this in with, with, with the little man here. Okay, I think that works. Um, hmm, I'm thinking maybe... Uh, I'm taking this way too seriously. I'm wondering if Albert should go back down to A, because I liked... That's the first character I put, put there, and I just... I don't know. I think Albert being the top of the A tier just kind of looks better. <laughs> we'll leave it at that just for a second. We'll, we'll, we'll see here. Okay. All right. Um, okay, uh, we got... Besides Bob, what, who I think is the scariest character in the show, we got the jumping man here, and just another uh, denizen of the uh, the Red Room and the White and Black Lodges. He doesn't have any lines, but he shows up usually in transitions in between scenes. Yeah, he's really scary to me. He's pretty creepy. Even the noises he makes are creepy. So um, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about where to place this guy. I'm at least B tier, but. All right, I'm gonna take put the jumping man right next to the the mother of all evil, and I'm also going to move these three creatures <laughs> um, a few people up. Thomas Eckert, um, he's kind of lumped in again to second half of season two. Um, just a place in the show where I really don't care too much about what's going on. I skip around a lot. Um, I'm gonna stick them right in between. The, 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 these these two guys here are the ones squabbling over a key in the last few episodes of season two. So I'm just gonna put them right next to each other. Um, yeah, doesn't uh, bear a huge impact on, on me. Okay, um, same with Vivian Smythe, Norma's mother. Um, and it turns out she's the food critic, right? I think. But she's kind of just like really controlling and naggy and negative. Yeah, she's going to be a chowderhead yokel. I remember her at least a little bit compared to these last characters right here. So I don't know, but not by much. I'm going to put her like here, I guess. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, the Great Northern, the funny old waiter from the Great Northern. But... He's the fireman in disguise, but, um, yeah, he doesn't act like the fireman. He acts completely different, so I guess he's his own character. Um, I really like him. Uh, you know, hey, very much like uh, the two-by-four old guy. Um, this guy's kind of the same, you know? I might put him, uh, <laughs> I might put him kind of, <laughs> kind of, um, hmm. I mean, he is the fireman, so maybe I'll just put him right next to the fireman. But they act completely different, but he's really funny. I like him. Gosh, do I like him more than Carl? I think I do. Yeah. And then the two by four guy. I don't think I like him better than the two by four guy, though. So, gosh. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. I'll keep it right there. Wow. I wasn't expecting to put either of these two old men so high up, but they're great and they're funny and they're entertaining. And that's what this is about. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, we got Michael Sarah as Wally Brando. Andy and Lucy's son. He only has one scene in the return, but it's a good scene. He's a bad boy with a heart of gold and uh, obviously very inspired by Marlon Brando. I believe in The Wild One, the movie of The Wild One uh, that I know Lynch is a big fan of. So, um, yeah, let's see. Wally Brando. Let me think here. I think I'm going to put him right next to Senorita Dido. I think maybe right there. I think that's good. Cool. Uh, Walter Lawford. Um, this guy is trying to franchise Norma's diner in season three. He's kind of a threat to where Big Ed can now be with Norma. But of course, Norma is now kind of seeing this guy, Walter. But 
you know, it ends up working out for Ed and Norma, or does it? Ed gets to be with Norma only after he orders some coffee and closes his eyes, but that's kind of left to uh, be determined by the viewer. Anyway, um, Walter's not a particularly fun, funny, or entertaining character, so I think the reason that he's there, I think he fulfills that role. Just yet another obstacle in between Big Ed and Norma getting together, so that's fine. I don't dislike him at all. And I'll put him in the C tier. Let's see, um, maybe like right before Dispatch Maggie. I think that's, yeah, that works. That's fine. Okay, oh my gosh, we're down to the last few here. Um, Doc Hayward, uh, Donna's dad, the doctor, the local doctor, he pretty much is everybody's physician in Twin Peaks. He's okay. Um, out of all like the major and supporting characters in the original series, he's kind of on the lower side for me. There's not necessarily anything he does that I dislike, but there's just so many other characters that I just like better, so... Um, and then he appears in the return, I mean, pretty high up there in age by the time the return came along. So he's only in a Skype call with uh, Frank Truman um, in the return. So, uh, but yeah, let's see. Um, I'll definitely say B tier and probably, let's see, I think I'll put him right in between Sarah and Catherine. Okay, we got Bill Hastings, played by Matthew Lillard and... Um, He's in the return only, and he's in only the first, I think, handful of episodes. But, um, man, his acting, his scene with Tammy, where he's being interrogated by Tammy, that's some incredible acting chops. And that character could have just been kind of like a nothing character, but um, Matthew Lillard really elevates the role. I think anyone else playing him probably would have been a D or maybe a C, but... Um, Lillard plays it so well, I think he elevates it to a B tier, probably. Um, let's see here. Um, I'll place him right next to Sonny Jim. How about that? Works for me. We got Wyndham Earl. He shows up right in season two when it's, you know, second half again, where it gets really pretty bad. But when David Lynch returns towards the last couple episodes of season two, he takes Wyndham Earl and makes him an amazingly awesome evil character. Anyone who's in the last episode of season two, that thing is a masterpiece. And I can't believe that episode, that last episode of season two, sometimes it's hard to believe that that aired on broadcast television. It's uh, fantastic. And so Wyndham Earl in the last episode of season two, just alone, uh, you know, I'm gonna forget about all the other episodes he's in. And just that last episode, he's really great. Let's see, where does he... Probably, probably B tier, but probably high B tier. Let's see here. Okay, I think I'm gonna put Wyndham Earl around, maybe right behind Josie? Okay, I think that works. Um, <laughs> okay, I added the white horse. How do you rank an animal against all these actors? But uh, why not? <laughs> We're having fun with this. <laughs> I'm going to put the white horse right after the French girl <laughs> and before Ike the Spike, because it would feel wrong to like a tiny, horrible hitman more than a beautiful white horse. How about that? <laughs> okay, great. Okay, uh, I added these guys. Uh, they weren't on the original tier list. The woodsman, there's the Lincoln Logger woodsman, the first woodsman, and then there's just collectively all the other woodsmen. Right. Along with Bob and the jumping man, these guys are definitely the creepiest characters in the entire series, but I love them. They're great. Yeah, I think they're going A tier. Um, probably both of them here. Let's see. Um, I think I like collectively the woodsmen more than the Lincoln logger woodsmen, but let's see here. I think... Um, I think they're going to they're gonna go right behind Philip Jeffries. And last, we've come to one that I added, the llama. Yes, but only one has a best friend with one arm. Harry? <coughs> and, of course, that character would go right here. Great. Perfect. I'm just kidding. Um, no, the llama's great, but uh, he's not going to be the best character on the show. Um, 
<laughs> um, you know, that wasn't planned. The llama just showed up in the shot, snorted in Cooper's face and walked off. And just, I mean, the timing is amazing. You couldn't have rehearsed or practiced a better reaction or timing wise of that. That's just good old fashioned magic caught on camera. So yeah, Llama, not much of a character, but it's an amazing moment in the show. Um, so I'm considering this more of a moment than the, a character. Um, but uh, I don't know. Let's see. Where should I place this? Um, I just included this just to be fun. So it's fine. Whatever. We're just having fun here. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a quick look over everything right here and see if I want to make any last changes. But that might be... That might be it. That might be a solid, solid ranking. Let's see here. Okay, I can see I want to make a little, some adjustments here. Here we go. I'm doing it. I'm moving Albert and Lucy and the little man. And then this would have to go with the little man and, and the log lady, I think. Great. I'm going to move the detective to the end of the B tier here. I'm going to add Frank Truman's wife to F tier. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for this guy. Like, he didn't even do anything wrong. <laughs> he just, I don't even remember him, and he has no presence in the show, so I just <laughs> stuck him in F. <laughs> I'm going to move Albert right ahead of Mr. C. You know what? I'm going to move Albert right by Harry. Same with Lucy. I'm going to move the log lady right for the little man, too. I think I'm going to move Major Briggs to the top of the A tier. There we go. Um, okay, I think that might be... I'm going to just switch the old man there. <laughs> I think this guy, is the old, ma the old man waiter's thumbs-ups are a little bit funnier than the banker screaming about a 2 by 4 <laughs> but they're both great. Um, okay, I think this is my solid 151 Twin Peaks characters, all ranked. This is mine. If you want to do your own, again, I have a link in the description to the tier list. But uh, just keep in mind, I added uh, 22, I believe. Um, maybe I can try and let you know right now which ones I added. I added the 2x4 guy. I added the Woodsman. That's two. I added the llama. I added the drunk guy. I added cousin Lil. I added the Black Lodge singer, Jimmy Scott. I added the real Dougie Jones. I th think I added Renzo. I think. I can't remember. But maybe I did. I added Burns. I added the mother. Um, I added um, Julie Cruz. I added the hysterical woman in the car. Senorita Dido, 1956 girl, Gordon's French Date, The White Horse, Monica Bellucci, um, Ruby, uh, Mary, the real-life owner of the Palmer House, uh, uh, Maggie, Dispatch, and uh, the 119 girl. Oh, I, I added um, Ernie Hudson <laughs> right here. Oh, and I added um, Frank Truman's wife. Oh, and I think I added... Josie's uh, brother, I think. I know I added 22, so I know I just counted like 24 or so, so I can't remember two of them, I think. Oh, and the llama. Did I count the llama and the white horse? Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and let me know if you like this. Um, I've never done a tier ranking before. Anyway, if you have any other ideas that would make a good tier maker video, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.